girl, you were scandalous and I loved it. Uh-huh. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. Today on Advice Hour, we've got my dermatologist, Dr. Janine Downey of Montclair, New Jersey. And although she specializes in all types of dermatological concerns, the one thing that I really want her to talk about today is Botox. She teaches it. She understands it. I've been trying to tell you that it's the best. Dr. Janine is going to walk you through the great things that Botox can do for you. It's not just for wrinkles, don't you know? All that sweat, it's for that too. Uh, plus whatever else she can fit in. But the main thing is I want to talk to her about Botox. Um, also, we've got to talk about Sean Robinson from Access Hollywood and who she's dating. You'll never believe it. You'll never believe it. We'll talk about that murder ink trial, Brittany and Justin. Yeah, I did say Brittany and Justin, as in Justin Timberlake. We'll talk about um, Halle Berry and her new man, Michael Ealy, and their prospective baby. We'll talk about Jay-Z. Oh, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. It goes down, and I'm glad you're here. It is what it is, people. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Kiki Wyatt. What's up? This is Brenda K. Star. What's up? This is Mariah, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy, Wendy Williams. Williams. Don't stop. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, welcome to the show. Hey. Hey, y'all. Don't forget about on Thursday. It's Thanksgiving, and we're playing our dysfunctional um, family show from our dysfunctional radio family uh, to your dysfunctional family. We'll be having all the dis- dysfunctional guests on. Oh, gosh. That would mean like, almost everybody. But we've narrowed it down to um, oh, the infamous Whitney Houston interview. Somebody on this show suggested we play that because we haven't played it in a while. I thought we had. I don't know. I would like for that interview to go away for like 12 months. And then, you know, we bring it back. We'll put it in a time capsule or something. I mean, can we, you know, after we play it this time, can we put that away for a moment? Yes. And then Bobby Brown, when I called him in the, um, in the hotel. And, you know, various stuff. Music is not, or excuse me, music and, and chat is not the highlight of your Thanksgiving. I know you'll be busy with your families, but just so that you know, um, we're planning something special for you today. You know, Angela Bassett has a new job, everybody. 
No, not an acting job. Those seem to be few and far between for her recently. Actually, in recent years, what is going on with Angela Bassett's acting career? I mean, well, she I know she got um, a voice of her career. She's lending her voice to Oil of Olay and their body quenching lotion. It's targeted for African-American women. And um, this is what the people of Oil of Olay, this is what they have to say. Angela personifies the kind of woman who buys Oil of Olay products. She has ageless beauty and an aura of sophistication that she's always very likable and real and a very rare combination. Research shows African-American women have different skin conditions and behaviors as it relates to how they use their beauty products. And so um, the people at Oil of Olay, everybody, have um, this specific lotion. It's called Olay's Quench Body Lotion. And they say that's for the black girls. The sisters. I'll tell you what. I got um, a compliment from somebody that I know. Oh, an, a white man, as a matter of fact. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, no, but I'm just saying that because you wouldn't think that a white, an older white gentleman would notice things like that, especially on like black people. Because you know and I know that, that we tan. And you know and I know that when you use self-tanners, that we can find ones that work. I tried a new one this weekend and I really like it. It's Clarion's um, Gel A Hydrating. And... Um, a white man that I'm used to seeing on a regular basis said to me, oh, Wendy, your tan looks beautiful. I was like, wow, it must really be working. Can you tell that I've been using gel A hydrating it's like a tan, from actually. Clarion? It's like a tan. She's got that bronze look. Well, thank you. Yes, yeah. So this works better than the CVS bronzer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Damn, and I was stuck on that CVS bronzer, too. I'm still going to use it, but this, okay. I'm just trying to get my glows right for Don's and Diva's extravaganza, to be honest with you. I've, I've been test driving a few different things. Mm. More details about that coming up in the show. Let's go to the uh, telephone. What's all going on in you all's world today? Hello? Yeah, hey, Wendy. How you doing? Hi. Uh, listen, Wendy, I wanted to ask you two questions. Okay. One, is Goose the same guy that they show on TV uh, uh, narrating the Puff Daddy shooting? That would be our Goose, yes. Hey, Goose, how you doing? And the second question is, um, have you ever thought of, uh, do you take, like, um, ideas from your audience? Of course. Okay, I wanted to know, maybe, like, every last Friday of the month, you could have a, a Wendy Williams, how do you say, how you doing? No? All right, Art, I never gave you a nonverbal for crickets, but that would be this. Okay. 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 Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, how do you say, how you doing? How you doing? Como esta? <laughs> Como se va? How you doing? Okay. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then say all right. All right. <laughs> Gosh, we have to go. All right, bye. All right, bye. <laughs> Hello? Hi, yes, Wendy? Yes, how are you? fine. How are you? I'm doing well today. That's great, Wendy. I just want to let you know that I listen all the time and I love the show. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. And happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks to you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Oh, I'm so glad, Wendy. Hi, turn your radio down. How you doing, honey? Uh, good. How are you feeling today? You know what it is? No. It's Junebug, Wendy. Stop acting foolish. It's who? Junebug. Oh, Junebug. Hey, Junebug. How you doing? I'm at work, child. Okay. I just wanted to holler at you and say, say hello and how you doing, girl. I'm doing and well. I listen to you religiously, child. Thank you, June Bug, honey. Uh, and what was that boy talking about, talking about Friday? Or how you doing? You know, we don't say about how you doing. Show him how, June Bug. How you doing? How, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, the hell with it. <laughs> Bye, June Bug. Bye-bye. Oh, my gosh. Jay-Z, everybody, um, has moved into Tina Knowles' building. It's in the newspaper today. Um, and actually, he's also moving into... Do you remember... Oh, hi. Who's on the phone? Raven. Hey, Raven. The correct way to say it is, how you doing? There you go. That's how you say it. All right. And that too. That's what's up. I just called to wish you and your family and the rest of the crew up there a very, very, very special 
happy holiday, okay? Well, thank you um, very I much. I love you all, and um, don't eat too much turkey, okay? I'm not. Did you have any luck with the, 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 the turkey fry thing? No. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, Raven, uh, I, we could not find anybody. And, you know, I didn't want to just have any old killer come by and fry a turkey, <laughs> and turkey with the extension cord. Well, you did say extension cord outside the house. I know. far in the back by the fence. But to quote Yvonne Graham, a listener from Brooklyn, she says, Wendy, put the damn turkey in the oven with some stuffing and gravy and put it on the table and tell your family and friends, happy Thanksgiving and how you doing? How you doing? That's what I I'm going to do. You, baby. Thank you. All right. I'll be listening. Bye, Raven. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Me too. So, um, like I was saying, do you remember, um, Artie, you might remember this story, too. Um, about a year ago, Jay was looking for this, um, Jay-Z was looking for this apartment in New York, and the white people who live in the building didn't want, you know, a killer, and, you know, Chelsea. in Chelsea, you know, he didn't want, you know, gun, they didn't want gun-wielding, knife-toting, <clears throat> Negroes up in their building. So the co-op board rejected Jay-Z, apparently. You know, the other residents in the building. For those of you outside of New York, <clears throat> um, even if you have the money, you, it, there are several living situations in New York where you have to be approved by a board of people who already live in that building. And that, plenty of people have gotten rejected, even though they've had the money. I know Mariah Carey, I remember years ago, was looking for a condo, and she got rejected all up and down. It was like the big joke in the newspapers that even with this money, they were rejecting her rock and roll lifestyle. It was after she divorced Tommy Mottola, and she's hanging around with all the black men. And so, you know, they didn't want her. Well, that same building that he got rejected from, the particular owner, the guy who owned the building at the time, he and his wife complained. Anyway, Jay-Z ended up getting that apartment, and so he's actually moving in there, and the neighbors, they say, are falling over their feet, you know, with hellos and, you know, graciousness, all lovey-dovey. They said that um, he, he uh, bought the place for $6.8 million, but he's spending close to $20 million to fix it up, and this is the place that boasts a 3,000-square-foot terrace, 3,000-square-foot that is bigger than a lot of people's actual houses, you know, where they're raising, like, you know, four kids. A 3,000-square-foot terrace. Imagine the Negro ensembles out there. Parties until the break of damn jaw. Mm-hmm. Plus, you just got that place in the Time Warner, um, in Time Warner Center. It's in the same building where Tina Knowles lives. <clears throat> and I would, I mean, I, I guess you would say, well, why would he want to move in the same building with Tina Knowles? Although in buildings like that, there's enough privacy where he's never going to see Tina. And I'm sure he will grease the, the front door person's palms plenty. So anytime free or anybody were to come over there, you know, Beyonce would never be the wiser. And I'm still on that. You guys might fall back from it if you want. Watch what happens in seven months. Turn this off. This sounds nice. We don't need a remix on everything. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> when I hear that, hey... Um, from China. It always reminds me that she's dancing. How You know how Beavis and Butthead dance. It, it always reminds me like when we play fast music or whatever and then China's and they're saying, hey, hey, hey. It's like she's dancing like Beavis and Butthead, all crazy and high. Oh, advice hours coming up next hour. Like I was telling you, my dermatologist, you know, I invited her in because nobody better to talk about Botox than somebody who doesn't just administer it. She has taken course hours. She actually teaches other dermatologists about how to administer Botox. <clears throat> and she's going to come in, and I want her today, I talked to her about it already, to extol the virtues of Botox. A lot of you all are very uh, nervous about Botox. Maybe you've thought about it. You don't know how much it costs. You don't know how long it lasts. You don't know the size of the needles. Are they big, giant needles or medium needles? And, uh, and then Botox as it relates to perspiration. So we'll talk during advice hour. Keep it here. Wendy, man. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't that, ask me no questions like I'm a child. It, Don't it, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams wow. Experience. 
find a pharmacy to fill an emergency prescription. Walgreens has more 24-hour stores than anyone. And you'll be glad to know that Walgreens fills more prescriptions in the middle of the night than anyone. All Walgreens are connected, so your prescription records are on file, no matter which Walgreens you visit. If your Walgreens isn't open 24 hours, chances are there's one right down the road that is. So, every Walgreens is your Walgreens. It's one more reason. Walgreens is the Pharmacy America Trusts. Thank you. Oh, my God. As promised, we fulfilled our guarantee. We've given away one hundred and seven thousand dollars in cash. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God. But it ain't over yet. The winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. Okay, repeat that for me. <laughs> you need to work the winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win Thursday, December 1st, beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul lives. Lives. On 107.5 WBLS. Hi, everybody. The Wendy Williams experience is in the building until 7 o'clock, and it's time for Vaughn Harper in the quiet storm. And um, a quick reminder for you that our WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose is happening on December 17th. All of the WBLS radio personalities will be there. Me and Vaughn, uh, we happen to have run into each other on the streets today. And, and uh, we were talking about the BLS Christmas Party with a Purpose. And um, it's going to be really nice. I ran into Steve earlier. Of course, he's going to be there. Mm, I just talked to Mark Jordan and Chuck Chill out about it. Everybody, everybody's going to be there with bells on, except for Art, because Art will be there with Michael Kors on. <laughs> um, December seventeenth, the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis. That's in Times Square, Forty Fifth Street and Broadway. A whole lot of fun we're going to be having. Um, the event features a full holiday buffet and live entertainment. You know what I just realized about this date? I come in um, from Berlin the day before, so I, I'm going to probably sleep all day on Saturday yes. and then come out because that's a Saturday night, December 17th. It's a Saturday night, and it's the WBLS Christmas Party with the Purpose. The purpose this year, in other words, where the money is going this year, is uh, to benefit anti excuse, yes to benefit anti domestic violence. Uh, there are two programs that we have earmarked for monies, um, Safe Horizons and also another program called Day One. So don't miss out on this. A whole lot of fun. The food, the holiday buffet. Vivian Green has just been added. Jaheem's performing. Donnell Jones. Uh, a few other surprises going on. So <clears throat> you can call Ticketmaster at 212-307-7171. And we will see you on December 17th at our w Chris WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. Let's go to the telephone, Goosey. See what people are talking about. Shout out to everybody in Edison, by the way. On Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, I'll see you at the Palooza Club. Oh. I am hosting Remy Martin, honey. Yes. Remy Martin Wednesday at the Palooza Club, hosted by me. Hello? Hello? Hi. It's Wendy? Yes, you need to turn your radio down, though. Oh, I sure will. Yes. How are you, Wendy? I'm doing fine. How are you today? I'm fine. Boy, Holly, ever, ever get through to you. <laughs> well, it's, ni it's nice to have you now. Yeah, well, I'm just calling to wish you and your family a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, well, thank you. You too. Are you cooking? Yes, I am. Is, I cook every year. Is Thanksgiving at your house, or you do do you cook at in, my home? At my home. How many people are you having? Um, it's just um, well, just me, my husband, my daughter, my two sons, oh. grown up sons. Oh yeah. So do they bring girlfriends and all that other kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. They bring girlfriends. Mm. My oldest son is thirty three. Mm. The other one's twenty eight. Mm hmm. But now, I'm, are these just letting you know that I'm an avid listener? Well, I do appreciate that. And I want to come to your dance and diva. You need a little flavor up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> From a woman with some seasoning on her. Uh, you got that right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's December 22nd at an unknown location. Well, right. I, do, I do actually know where it is. They won't let me say yet. Well, how do I get to, to do this? Well, I would love to come. You can, you can, you can listen to win passes. Okay. Or there are going to be a limited number of tickets available for sale. Uh -huh. And um, actually, you know what I need? I need the Dons and Divas hotline. I don't have it in here. Oh wow! Damn. You don't have it? Yeah, because I would like my husband and I to come and 
Okay. So he, he knows I talk about you all the time. Oh, Wendy uh, Williams. Wendy Williams. Lovely. Lovely. Well, I'm going to give you the official website. Um, okay. All right. Where you can actually email okay. um, if you have a question or something like that. Okay. Don, Don's. And then mm-hmm. the word and, A-N-D. Don, A-N-D. Yeah, it's Don's and Divas. Okay. 2005 at yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. Yep. And you can also go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com, to visually you know, see information about it. It's five hours open bar. Okay. There's treats in the VIP. It's the Ooh. ultimate grown and sexy affair. The party oh, is yeah. called the Black Party. Uh-huh. And, yeah, um, I heard that. I heard that. I heard you say that. Yeah, and there are going to be a limited number of tickets available. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna see what I can do. I want to try to so I can meet finally meet you oh. in person. I'm always listening to you on air. I want to meet you in person. Well, you know, you can come to the Don's and Divas Extravaganza, or you can always drop by the Laugh Factory on any given Wednesday night for the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience. This okay. Thursday is, 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 the, is the Laugh Factory of, of Except, a lot of kids my my son's age, or like they're. I mean, is the older crowd there also? Well, good. You just gave me my window in because I wanted to ask, how old are you? I'm getting ready to, well, I'm over 5 so. <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you closer to 60 than you are to 50? No, no, no. Okay. Not, I'm not that, that old. All right. Can you still drop it like it's hot? Oh. Yes, I can, honey. Uh, all right. <laughs> I still can. Yes, I can. <laughs> because. And tell Art, do not put them crickets on me. Because <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we would love to have you at the Dons and Divas. And, yeah, and you know, I would love to come. And you, what did you ask about the, the Laugh Factory if it's a bunch of kids? Yeah, is it? Yeah. No. I mean, you know what? It's everybody. Everybody's over 21 because obviously, you know, there's alcohol there. Right. You will find some 22-year-olds. You will find some 62-year-olds. And, okay. and um, every once in a while, like when Al Franken comes through, you'll find an 80-year-old. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. But, um, nice. but I wanted you all to know that this week, uh, the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience is actually not going to be on Wednesday night. Um, for just this week only, it's going to be on Thursday night. Because oh, I f- on Thanksgiving? This, this song? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, yeah, everybody's going to leave you in the kitchen clean up. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you won't be able to come through. <laughs> I mean, All right. unless you want to leave the, the the plates like I do, just leave everything and then go back. huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my husband will kill me. Yeah, I got an air for, uh, air force man. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, mm-hmm. so that means he's the one that makes the bed at night and he does all of that. You yeah, know, when we get up. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, listen, I will. I will do that. I uh, email you. Yes. I'll see what I can do to try to meet you. Okay, Wendy? Yes, it's, it's going to be fabulous. But either way, you know, I'll see you around. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. I sure will. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, honey. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, good evening. Um, I just wanted to say hi to Wendy. Oh, this is Wendy. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I want to let you know that I'm enjoying your show. Thank you. I love listening to you. You always keep uh, your listening audience. Um, very up to date with the latest gossip and advice and I think you are doing a superb job. Thank you. Thank you so much. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Ian de Gourcelago. Um mm-hmm. You have a, a gentleman in your hand and a gem. Mm-hmm. The West Indian community does miss him and um, we're asking that you take good care of him. This is uh, Junior's wife from the Iron Master saying hi to you and to the ghost and to the rest of your staff. Hi. So thank you very much. You have a happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, look at Goose Whoa. getting the love. Huh? I was waiting for her to say something foul, like you tell him <laughs> that he has a pay. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, welcome to the show. Hi, I listen to you all the time. I'm at work right now. Okay. But I wanted to ask you, um, this is about the Bible word. About how tall is Sierra? Because I noticed that. How tall like, is she? Yeah, she's like taller than everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, see, but she's not a big giant. She's not as tall as me. I think she, well, Sierra's about five feet nine. Really? Oh, I'm like five, then five. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all. I just want to say hi. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. 
Yeah, it's a good thing her question was short because her phone line was a mess. <laughs> all right, you all, we're going to keep it moving. Um, it's Wendy Williams, and we're all here until 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul, 107.5 WBLS. It's Wendy with the throwback from way back. A Wendy Williams experience. A Wendy Williams experience. It's about that time again. The Wendy Williams Experience is searching for new interns. Come join the Wendy Williams Experience. Fax a cover letter and resume to 866-WENDY-FAX. Broadcast, journalism, mass communication, radio, TV, and film, and music majors only. All applicants must be over 18 years of age. Currently enrolled as a sophomore, junior, or senior in a college or university. Internship hours are 1130 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck and thanks for listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, yeah. And if you don't plan on grinding, you can put that where? Back there. <laughs> hey, Cassidy. Still on lockdown. You know who else is um in trouble again? It, it just gets boring talking about DMX. Do we talk about it or we do, do we just ignore him and his whole situation? DMX is back in, well, jail. Familiar territory for him. The judge gave him 10 extra days behind bars on Friday for a total of 70 days because, you know, he showed up like two hours late to court for sentencing on Thursday. And then when he came to court, he had all these cameras with him. I guess they're doing, um, you know, documentary. Some documentary, whatever. I'm still a person with kids at home and a wife. He says, I'm sorry. I was sick. I apologize. Hmm. Mm. Okay. In the meantime, friend to the show, Swiss Beats, got a little something going on. Swiss, Swiss, now, Swiss Beats, I know, has money. This will be resolved any moment now, but um, he was taken to court last week over child support. Okay. His baby's mother, Nicole Levy, originally filed a suit against him in December of 2004. Um, after a paternity test proved that um, he fathered her child. So, apparently, well, according to this lawsuit, um, let's see, filed for child support. So maybe he's paying, but it's not enough, or maybe he's not paying at all. Um, he hasn't financially acknowledged, but um, Swiss Beats appeared in court with his wife, J Records recording artist Mashamba, Mashanda. So that, you know... I guess, you know, it's unity within their marriage. And then a decision on the case is still pending, you know, how much he has to pay. But apparently the paternity test came back. Yeah, you know, he's the father. Mm. I wonder how old the kid is. Like, was this a creepation that happened Swiss, within like the last year and a half, two years? Mm. Mm. Always something going down. Advice hour is coming up next hour. Dr. Janine's coming in. We're going to talk about Botox. Um, but I have something from Alicia here. Dear Wendy, my name is Alicia. My name is Change to Protect the Innocent. I'm 32 years old. I have a problem. Let me give you a little history. Ten years ago, I married my high school sweetheart, Mark. Together, we have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter. We're now divorcing, Wendy. Now, I have a best friend named Nathalie, um, and she's also going through a divorce. She was married for six years to Dave. They have five children, a 14-year-old daughter that she had in high school, a nine-year-old daughter, a seven-year-old son, a three-year-old son, and a newborn. Well, I gave her a shower and a bridal shower um, and was there for the birth of all of her children. Our nine-year-old daughters are best friends, play cousins. Well, Wendy, here's the deal. Dave turned into a monster. This is N Natalia's ex-husband, the, the best friend. Dave turned into a monster and made it horribly painful for Natalie to go through with the divorce. But she remained brave and strong and, and convinced that no matter what, God would take care of her and her kids. I supported my girl, Natalia. I stuck by her side. Dave, the ex-husband, dealt the final blow by demanding a paternity test after he agreed to pay, before, excuse me, before he agreed to pay any child support. See, this is trifling. But you wonder what would make a guy ask something like that? Because there's always a seed of doubt, I guess. Like, like, do men just come out and ask for things like that? And if they do, don't you just merrily prance over like, and when we get the results, now I'm going to, you know, double up on whatever it was that I was going to be asking you for. How dare you? Yes. 
I would dare my husband to, you know, but you know what? I would do it. I would do it. Now, as opposed to that, whatever I was going to ask you for, now this is what I'm going to ask you for. I would do it gladly. Well, listen to this. I stuck by her. Dave dealt the final blow when he demanded a paternity test before he agreed to pay any child support. Now, the two, um, the oldest two daughters she had before meeting him. The first son was born in their relationship, and so was the second son. I hated him for putting her through this pain, but, Wendy, the test proved that the two boys weren't his. Ooh. Now, see, you never know who your best friend's with. Your best friend could be a hoe. Yes. Which, apparently, this girl not it just had one child and tried to deceive the husband, but two. So now, all of a sudden, I'm on the husband's side. I don't even need to read the rest of this, but we will. Let's go back in. I thought I knew everything about Natalie. See? You don't know who you're friends with. You don't know who the hell you're friends with. I thought I knew everything about Natalie. We grew up together, went to elementary school together. I never heard of her jumping off while with Dave, so I'm so confused, Wendy. This, my life gets turned upside down. A week later, Mark, now this is Alicia who's writing me the note. Mark is her ex-husband. Hit the drum roll. A week later, Mark jumps up and demands a divorce. He moved out the next day. I never saw it coming, and it crushed me. What hurt even more was that Natalie moved to Queens, and I haven't spoken to her since then. <laughs> she abandoned me in my time of need, and shortly afterward, I found out why. Last week, my ex-husband, Mark, called me and told me the whole deal. He and Natalie had been lovers since the first day he met the both of us. Damn. See, so he decided to trick off with one and marry wow. the other. Wow. wow. Her oldest wow. daughters and two sons are Marks. Ooh. In other words, she got five kids and four of them are the best friends' husbands. That's crazy. Wow. 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 And they moved in together, wow. Wendy. They are now all a family. My life becomes a lifetime movie in a matter of six months. I've been so depressed, but it gets worse. He wants my daughter to know that their kids are half brothers and sisters, and I don't want my daughter to know yet. And my daughter wants her father to come. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How old is your daughter? Okay, you don't say. Uh, together, we have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter. Damn, it's almost time to tell her. Yes. All right, you got 12 months to figure out how you're going to break it to your daughter. You got 12 months because, I mean, I know you have to, I mean, this is a lot. It's not just about your daughter. It's about you, too. This is a, this is a lot. The, Christmas won't be the same this year. Mm -mm. I would not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. As a matter of fact, you know what you do? Can you um can you whisk you and your daughter uh to Miami or Jamaica or something like that? Can you hold up any place but your house so your daughter doesn't have to ask about her father when he's in such close proximity because she's gonna ask? But uh uh, mm -mm. I wouldn't tell her. I'd give twelve months to figure it out, and I'd start taking my shrink lessons as soon as I close the microphone. Alicia, you have been through so much. I hate them all for you. I hate them all. I hate Mark. I hate Natalie. Oh, Alicia. Very sloppy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. And you need to go back in and get more money for the divorce. You need to raise a stink. Oh. Wendy, man. I've been with this guy for like five years, and I know you say don't cheat. I know, but I can't help it. I want to. Do you have intention on getting married? We're married. Oh, my God. The Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, this is Bob Lee. We at WBLS would like to thank all the listeners who gave the gift of giving this Thanksgiving season and helped make the WBLS New York Food Bank Triborough Food Drive a huge success. Hello, I'm Jenny from the Food Bank, and I'd like to thank our community and WBLS for coming out to support our mission to end hunger in New York City. The WBLS street team and air personalities pitched in to gather hundreds of pounds of non-perishable food items for New York's hungry. Keep up the good work. You really did it. You guys are always there. Special thanks to Atlantic Center Pass. Pathmark Brooklyn, Springfield Boulevard Pathmark of Queens, Pathmark of Harlem, and Paramount Pictures. Yours, mine's, and ours in theaters November 23rd. Keeping you connected to our community. 107.5 WBLS. His favorite things 2005. Let the fun begin! Next Oprah. Today at 4, only on ABC 7. Tonight at 5 o'clock, only on ABC 7. 
Wendy Williams. You rotten, rude, ungrateful. For Wendy Williams. 107.5 WBLS. New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call it number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She's made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord. Have I ready for this? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. Ever heard. The Wendy Williams experience. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. I'm having a problem with... With my fiance and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1 866 Get Wendy. Fax Wendy at 866 Wendy Fax. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm everybody welcome to advice hour here on the wendy williams experience and i know that normally we start off with wendy's medical minute except today this whole break is going to be wendy's medical minute because i wanted to speak with you about botox only i don't see my my dermatologist walking down the hall so maybe we'll stall by getting started on one of you all's letters because um i mean you know there's always some letters to be read. Um, we didn't line up at... Oh, no, here she comes. Never mind. It's Dr. Janine Downey. Hello. How are you, girl? Good. How are you? Fine. Good to see you. Have a seat. Hello. We wanted to talk about dermatology today. Um, but before we get started, um, if you happen to uh, live in the New York Tri-State area, particularly if you live in North Jersey and you're looking for a great dermatologist, this is who I use. Her name is Dr. Janine Downey. Do you have a website? www.imagedermatology.com Okay, you look fabulous. I love your jeans. I, I wore them for you. They're all embellished I stuff. wore like the whole boost. I, like wore the, I just did a Wendy thing. Are, are you practicing today? I did. I was seeing patients until about like 2 and then I had to like beat feet into the city. So now when, when are you, uh, what are you doing after this? Heading to the club? I actually, <laughs> I'm actually meeting Oprah tonight. Wow! I know, I was going to tell Finally, you. Finally, great! I know, I'm so excited. You, so you're comes. meeting her, actually Oprah, like tonight at the International Emmys. My brother's one of the judges, and he hooked me up. Oh, so okay. Hopefully, I thought you meant meeting her, like like you all were going to meet. And oh she's no, I wish. No, smoke no, you wish. over to get oh, you on her wish. show. I wish private private cocktail. Well, reception. Dr. Janine, um, everybody, you've probably seen her before. Um, sing your praise. You, you you've been on like Good yeah. Morning America. Yeah. Oh, sing my praise. Oh. Um, I'm a consultant for the Today Show and The View. I've been on Good Morning America as well. Um, Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 4. I've been on Wendy, most importantly. Yes. My sister under the skin. And for those of you um, um, who are looking for Dr. Janine's address, it's on Park Place, but what's the actual address? It's 51 Park Street in Montclair, New oh. Jersey. Okay. Now... Um, image dermatology is the name of Dr. Janine's practice. I mean, she does everything from simple helping you out with zits mm -hmm. to um, you do laser hair removal. I do laser hair removal. I do Botox. I do um, Restylane, which is the new collagen. I right. still do collagen. I do Sculptra, which um, you do it once a month for maybe six months, and then you have nothing for two years. Restylane yeah. is the comeback every six months. Collagen is the comeback every two months. And Botox is come back maybe once every three months. Every three months is Botox. Botox. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about Botox because Dr. Janine doesn't just do Botox. She teaches it. Right. Okay. Um, explain to everyone what Botox is, the size of the needles and, and like that guy. Sure. It is a purified protein. So basically back in 1981, mm -hmm. they were using it for people that had um, spastic eye where they were always blinking their eye open and closed, something we call blepharospasm in medical technology. 
And uh, they started noticing, hey, that forehead has no wrinkles. So around 1985-86, a Canadian couple, she's a derm and he's an ophthalmologist, um, discovered that this was a great off-label use for the drug. So from there, they took one step to another. It got FDA approval to smooth out wrinkles on our foreheads, crow's feet around our eyes, and it actually helps with those little tiny fine lipstick bleeder lines that some people have from smoking and some people just have from, you know, using too many straws and getting a little older. Right. So it helps us with all of that. You have to go to somebody who knows what they're doing with Botox. Exactly, though. because if you don't, you can end up with... Um, 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 a, a droopy face. Yeah, well, a droopy lid for like at least two weeks is a problem. But, you know, I tell my patients to be upright for six hours afterwards, and that's really important. I've had one celebrity um, who got her hair done. Mm -hmm. I've had one um, mom who went home and took a nap. And then I've had two people that just aren't sure what happened. So I haven't had that many in my career, but every time I have one, it's a stress. You and know? back to the celeb who got her hair done, she was putting her head back, apparently, in the, yeah. in the, yeah, in in the, the sink. Uh -huh. And you just, you can't do that either and no exercising for the rest of that day typically i like my patients to exercise before they come see me for botox but i've got to be honest i've done thousands with botox i teach it my patients really love it if you do have the droplet it's for a week or two but hopefully that would not never ever be the issue okay um everybody looks refreshed and how big are the needles they're tiny little needles. We use 30 gauge or 31 gauge needles. So for people that aren't in medicine, they're just really fine. They almost look like um, are they shorter? Pins. Are they shorter than an eyelash? Um, I would say they're shorter than an eyelash. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Than your average eyelash, and maybe you know, like a. Twice as thick as your, your normal hair. I mean, just really not thick at all. Right. And we can put numbing paste on. We put ice on. Yep. But we just kind of smooth you out. Right. And this is where I go to, to get my Botox done. But now there's something uh, with Botox that has nothing to do with wrinkles. and has to do with stopping the perspiration. I know. So um, let's talk about that because um, I know that you can get that under your arms, the soles of your feet. Can you get it in your groin? Um, actually, people have asked me for Botox in their groin, and we've done a tiny little bit in there, but just because of the nerves and the sensation there, we don't really do Botox too much in the groin. Where we do do it is hands also, the palms of the hands, oh, Wendy, because people good one. that are sweating people all the time. Sweat. And you just really, you have to do nerve blocks first, because those people, obviously your hands have tons of nerve endings on them. That's how we touch and feel. Right. So you'd have to numb them up. Under the armpits, it works wonderfully. It is amazing. Wow. I had a patient that, literally, she would have to change her shirt I think it was seven, six to seven times a day. She's in the beginning of high school. Mm. I took her on a Kimura, um, Kimura show last year, right. um, Life and Style, uh -huh. and um, I did Botox for her, and, you know, nothing for three months, um, and then after that, I did her again, and now nothing for six months. Look at that. So it typically works somewhere between three and six months under the armpits, although I have had people say it lasts up to a year, and a lot of the celebs do it because they don't want to wreck the $50,000 gowns that, that they borrowed for the, for the Emmys right. or whatever. Right, right, right. All right, now let's talk about Restylane. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? What does it do? Mm -hmm. Restylane is a hyaluronic acid. Okay, in English, Janine. What that is, is that is a sugar that's naturally in our bodies. It's in our joints. So it's in your elbows. It's in your knees already. And it's something that doesn't have to be tested. So it's not like a byproduct of somebody else's. Okay. Um, so now this has been purified, and it's a gel. So you inject it into... Um, Just say your smile lines right yeah, here. The yeah, the kind of, we call it the marionette lines or the puppet lines yes. between the nose and the mouth yep. that people hate. Uh -huh. Or dents in the chin. Okay. We can inject it under the eye. Eyes. We can inject it in deep lines on the forehead. Mm. And it just really, and I've built cheekbones. People that come in with really flat oval faces. Oh, wow. I can build a cheekbone with wrestling, Wendy. It is great. I just did one today. See? And these are things that can be done without plastic surgery right there in your dermatologist's office if you go to a dermatologist who is about more than pimples. Right. You've got to go. I mean, and dermatology has changed so much over the years. It's phenomenal, the things that you can get done in the office. Um, now, Keisha's online. Line three. Um, this is off topic. Put your. Oh, no, she's not on. Okay, good. Because is Gina on line seven? Okay, Gina's on line seven. This is off topic, but she's asking about keloid. Just pop your headphones on and uh, say hello to line number seven. Gina's 28 years old. Hey, Gina. Hi, Gina. Hey, how's it going? Good. All right, go ahead and uh, turn your radio down and ask Dr. Janine what you wanted to ask her. Okay, Um, I have a question about keloids because I think I was wearing necklaces with pendants that were, like, uh, rusty, and I've developed two keloids on my chest. Mm -hmm. And somebody recently told me that I'm able to get them off with laser treatment through a dermatologist. I'm wondering if that's true and how I go about it. And excuse me, Gina, your Gregory Abbott is way too loud in the background. Oh, it's way too loud. Yeah. 
Here, let me turn it down. Okay. 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 All right, go ahead. Okay, so basically there's a couple of things. It sounds like you had an irritation from nickel um, on your neckline, so that's to begin with. Then you probably scratched it and caused some type of an irritation because a keloid just doesn't come from necklace irritation. So okay. just to explain, like, the in-between to everybody else who's listening. Uh -huh. So you scratched it. It started to get thick. You probably picked it and played with it some. Unfortunately, right. for um, people with skin of color from Jewish and Italian, African American, Asian American, Latino American, and mm -hmm. I have a ton of white patients that get keloids, so it sounds like that's what it might be. It depends on how big and bulbous it is, but try okay. to not scratch it anymore because the thing that you want to think about, Gina, is you don't want a third breast in the middle of your chest. Okay, no. right. Two is enough. So what I tell everybody is I can laser them to flatten them out some, or I can inject them with something called cortisone, okay. which is low dose and low strength and totally safe. I mean, the bottom line is that I really would need to take a look at it to see what to do, but don't pick it, don't play with it anymore. Okay. If you can't help yourself, then keep it covered until you come see somebody. Okay. But just picture what I'm saying to you about a third breast in the middle of your boobs, right. and it'll make you stop playing with it, because okay. it sounds like it's in a very visible area, and you yeah. sound young. Yeah. And I'm wondering, um, how much does it cost for the laser treatments in total to remove something like you that? You know, it's so difficult to say without looking at you. Laser treatments for keloids can range between like 100 to 150 on the low end, okay. to over 500 on the higher end. It just okay. really depends on what you're doing. Okay? All right. Okay, All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, Gina. All right. Bye-bye. Dr. Janine Downey, Image Dermatology is the name of her uh, practice in Montclair, New Jersey. This is where I go. And Olivia is on line number six, and she wants to <laughs> wants to know something that you Hello. and I are going to venture into. When I come to get dosed with Botox, we talked about removing moles on, okay. on me. Yeah. So, um, Olivia, go ahead and talk to Dr. Janine. Um, I have a question, Dr. Janine. What about removing moles? Okay. Um, Olivia, it's really easy to remove moles, and I do them on myself all the time because I want my grandma... You do them yourself? I do them on myself to myself all the time, as well as to tons of my patients. I want my grandmother's warmth of spirit. I do not need her moles. <laughs> so, I know they say, oh, it's a beauty mark. Yeah, and you know what, honey? Whatever. But after a while, when you have a million of them and you're looking like a moving chocolate chip cookie... Yeah, it's just like you enough. got one, and it's just out yeah, there. Yeah, or... Or or the raisinette thing. My daughter and I were at the farm at the uh, dry cleaners, and somebody walked up behind us, and my mother and my daughter turned around and said, "Look, mommy, raisins." And I like, went, oh my god, because I was so embarrassed. And then the guy said, "I need a good dermatologist," and I was shutting up. And then the the dry cleaning lady no, outed me. But I just you, feel they, like it's just time for a change. Like everybody, sweetie, like, oh, it's look easy. At the chocolate chip is so cute. Yeah, and you're no. only 22, Olivia. It's easy. All you do is you come in. I assess them. I either do it with a little electric needle where I just go zzz, zzz, and zap a whole bunch of them. I'm about to do like. 30 on my chest the day is before like, Thanksgiving. How much? You got to give me a number. Because I'm, a, I'm, I'm in Jersey. Okay. Go ahead. 973. Well, 973-509. Okay. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing yeah, me, Olivia. You're killing Olivia, me. Uh, we're going to hang up on you. 973-509-6900. Okay. Okay. Zero, zero. Zero. Yeah, and you can take off, you know, 10 to 20 at a time. I had somebody come in the other day. I removed 200 of them. Wow. So it just depends on what you're doing, but you can do big. <laughs> or, or he's killing me over there. Or you can do small, but I mean, we can do a lot. There's no need to walk around with the tiny ones, and there's definitely no need to look like a raisinette. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Yeah, that is the next thing that I want to yeah. get done. I got to tell you, you know, because Dr. Janine has helped me out with my eczema and psoriasis. She's also helped me out... Uh, with this Botox. And the next thing that I want to investigate is the whole mo re mole removal, which I've actually already investigated. Now I just have to make the time to come in. So next time I get dosed up with the Botox, we're going to start. I have some on my decollage and I also have some on the sides of my face. Mm -hmm. And it's from years of tanning, baby oil and iodine. You mm -hmm. know how that is. Yeah. Exactly. Palm Springs during spring break in college. Yeah, Daytona too. Beach in high school. Martha's Vineyard. That's, baby. yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, things happen to the skin, and you guys just be mindful of that. And um, I guess, well, let's go to line number three. Trisha wants to ask you about eczema. Um, hello. Hi, Trisha. Hi. You're on I'm with so Dr. Janine. I'm happy that you're talking about this today because I have eczema. And I have something called Ithiosis vulgaris. What is that? Which is like fish scale. Like scale. And I haven't shown my legs in like 20 years. Oh. And you're only 27. Yes. I'm just wow. ashamed. I only wear skirts in the winter time so I can wear my tights. 
Yeah. I mean, Trisha, really quickly, because we only have one minute until break, okay? Yeah. The bottom line with eczema is you have to just go to a good board-certified dermatologist. So you go, there's different drugs that are not steroids, including Protopic and Iladel, that work oh, yeah. really, really well. And then there's a new one that came out a month ago that you might not know about called Mimics. That's also excellent that I'm giving children like, you know, like crazy right now. In okay. addition to all of that, you need to cut your nails, stop scratching. My favorite body wash, which I've said a million times on TV, is a Vino Skin Relief Body Wash. Wash. I yeah. do like Cetaphil cream a lot. In terms of the ichthyosis, honey, you need to see somebody, because you're 27. When you're 80, you're going to be mad you didn't show those 27-year-old legs, my sweet. Exactly. So, I mean, even if you have to grease them up with Vaseline, there's different things that can be done. There's a lot of different moisturizers on the market that'll make your legs look better. Okay. All right, Trisha. Thanks Thank for calling. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, everyone, uh, you know, whether you go to my Dr. Janine Downey or whether you find a dermatologist on your own, I think the most important thing in terms of a dermatologist these days is that you get somebody who does more than pop pimples. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yes. You just don't want somebody who's focused on one aspect. No. Unless that's the only aspect you ever want them for. But how about if, you know, they're, you're doing, they're doing your pimples and you have a skin cancer. I mean, you know. Right. I mean, you want. And, and, and you do uh, little biopsies for, for skin cancer. All there the time. At, at All your time. office. Mm-hmm. All right. So whether it's Botox, Restylane, whether it's removing pimples, removing uh, zits, you know, getting something can- uh, tested, whether it's cancerous or not, mm-hmm. um, you can find it all at Image Dermatology on Park Street in, in Montclair. Montclair. What's mm-hmm. the actual address? 51 Park Street, and, Wendy. What, and what's the telephone number? Uh, thank you. 973-509-6900. I just know, already know where it is, so I just pull up and park. Thank you, <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, All right. Oh, the website. Website. www.imagedermatology.com. And where you got your different degrees, your, your schooling? I went to Tufts undergraduate. I got my bachelor's of science from there. I got went to American, have a master's from American. Then I went to SUNY Downstate, which is SUNY Health Science Center at Brooklyn. Got my medical degree from from there, then Cornell was my internship, and then Mount Sinai was my residency, and I was chief resident. I'm only the second African American graduate from Mount Sinai's program ever in the history of the program. See? So this woman knows what she's talking about, and she's married, and she has a beautiful daughter, and she lives in New Jersey. And like I said, her name is Dr. Janine Downey, D O W I N E, in Montclair, New Jersey. That's my girl. That's where I go. And, and think and, about. N I E D O W N I. What did I say? Something different, but it's okay. Oh, D O W N Y E N I E N I N I E. That's what I said at the beginning. Why? D O W N I E. And listen about the Botox. Don't sniffle your nose up to it. Think about it. It works, and it works well. Everybody's always so scared. It's no big deal. I do it. Then Wendy and I are in the same cycle now. That's why when I start running out, I just call Wendy like, Wendy, it's time for you to come exactly. back in. Exactly. And there are a lot of black people who will tell you for years, good black don't crack. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And you can keep it together longer. Why Hello. Not? Hello. Why not? All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much, doctor. You're welcome. And thank I'll be you. seeing you in about, what is that, like two months? Do we have two more months? Look, I'm still, I'm still good. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have like a month and a half to two more months. All right. I'll okay. see you in a month and a half. Oh. And then we'll do the moles and the Botox and we'll chat like Lots we always love. do. Lots of love to your family. All right. Thank you. You too. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thursday. Keep Thursday. it here, everybody. Advice Hour continues next. Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. wow. It's just about that time of year. Time for another pate. A WBLS party with a purpose. Last year, Fantasia, John Legend, Keith Sweat, and Brian McKnight sold out weeks before the event, causing many to be left in the cold. Don't let that happen to you. This year will be even bigger and better. We'll begin with a full holiday buffet. Then Chuck <laughs> Chill Out gets the party started. Started with your favorite WBLS personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob. This is Champagne. Good boy, David Levy, rocking you and popping you. And this is Mark Jordan. Then get ready when Jaheim hits the stage. It's going to be a party, y'all. Oh and just added Vivian Green. Oh Along with Donnell Jones. Mark your calendar for Saturday night, December 17th. It all goes down to the Broadway Ballroom with the Marriott Marquis Midtown. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. The WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose 2005 is brought to you by our friends at the New York Department of Health, urging all New Yorkers to get their flu shots by logging on to nyc.gov.com to find convenient flu shot locations. It's a party with a purpose. With 107.5 WBLS. 
the doctor was asking me whether I was cooking for Thanksgiving. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to, well, excuse me. My mother and father just arrived today from Miami. So I'm sure that they're like listening. Yeah, they're here. They just, you know, broke in around 10 o'clock this morning. I haven't told them yet that I have tickets for them to go see you on stage at oh. the uh, Newark Symphony Hall. Yes. <sighs> anyway, Janine was telling me about this place on Bloomfield Avenue called Mardi Gras. She said they have all the good side dishes and stuff like that. I don't really need anything else. I'm more looking forward to the day after Thanksgiving than Thanksgiving. My girls are coming over. My friend Lisa Carnegie and my cousin friend Debbie. I say cousin friend because sometimes when you say cousin, then it just sounds like somebody that you associate with out of family obligation. But not with Debbie. Debbie's my friend cousin, cousin friend. And and the three of us know each other. As a matter of fact, the three of us together, there's a lot of plans hatched and a lot of trouble to be gotten into. So they're coming over for lunch on Friday, those two. And I'm more excited about Friday than I am about Thursday. You know what I mean? We'll be sitting around the house, having our drinks, watching TV, eating the day after Thanksgiving food, which I'm planning the menu. It's totally different than Thanksgiving food. There's ne'er turkey, one. Mm -mm, No turkey on the menu. No turkey sandwich. Nothing. All different food. So anyway, you all, how are things shaping up with you? Uh, You know, as we here at WBLS promise... We were giving away $107,000, and we fulfilled that. But it's not over. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour, and all you have to do to qualify is sign up at on the WBLS newsletter. And the way you do that is you go to our website, WBLS.com. And then begin listening on Thursday, December 1st at 6 a.m. with the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And there are going to be more details on how you uh, get in on it. Okay? So we're still giving away money. That's for sure. Um, It's still advice hour also. Um, I don't know whether people are on hold or not. Yes. They are? Oh, boy. Okay. Is there somebody online, too? Yes. All right. I have here on my computer, it's Nicole. Nicole, Hi. Hi, this is Wendy. Okay, great. Nicole's 24, and her baby's father has another daughter, and she can't deal with it. Okay, Nicole, how old is you? How old is first? My, my, da- my daughter is three. Uh huh. And how old is his other daughter? Oh no, he doesn't have another daughter. What it was is that um, he just found out he had a daughter in September, and I didn't tell him because we weren't we were just friends. We never had a relationship, so. Um, what happened was, is I told him, and he's totally elated, but my thing is, is, he has a girlfriend, and I feel like I'm stuck because I want the best for my daughter, and he wants to be part of his life, but I'm, like, in love with him. <laughs> okay, um, so your daughter's three years old with him? Yeah. And you just told great. him recently that he's the father? Yeah, he just found out. How did you just find out? I mean... Well, well, I just never, I, I never told him. He's like, we were only friends in high school. Yeah. And then, you know, September 11th, he called me up because he lives in New York and I live in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And I went down to visit him and, well, I ended up getting pregnant with my daughter and we just lost contact and we just didn't talk. Yeah. So I just left it at that. But part of me, because she started school, like, mm-hmm. felt that she really needed a father figure in her life. So, okay, so, so I got this, in contact with him. This is that 9-11 sex already. You know, that sex without the condom because yes. the world is about to end. I, you know, I was going to say, why don't you use a condom? But I totally understand because 9-11, I think I would have had sex without a condom with with a stranger. You know, thinking that, hey, hey, you know, the world's about to end anyway. Um, but this is your fault. You slow, you blow. You know, you should have stepped up to the plate and expressed your feelings for him a while ago. Now he has a new girlfriend and what? So now work out your child support and he has a new girlfriend. See, this is what happens when people don't speak up regarding their emotions towards towards another person and and sex is just an act you know sometimes you know in establishing something it is about um it is about um emotions and things like that but but on 9 11 it was just an act and frustration with the terrorism and stuff like that um so so basically get your child support and see how much you can involve him in your daughter's life as far as the romantic part he already has a girlfriend nicole yeah. Yeah, you blew it. Because <laughs> you should you should have spoken up. Yeah. Yep. Oh well. well. Thank you. Take care. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. PR is on line one. <clears throat> PR is thirty. Hello? And um, something about gay men and being on the DL. Yeah. Hey PR. How you doing, baby? Good. So explain your situation. Okay, I'm in a, uh, in a uh, uh, relationship with this. Um, I'm in my thirties, and he is. Um, 
20, um, two years old. Mm-hmm. And um, his baby, he lived with his baby mama. And his baby mama, because he always stand over my house, and his baby mama um, thinks he's cheating on him. So he introduced me to his baby mama as his cousin from out of town. Mm-hmm. And now I've grown to like his baby mama. We hang out, go out, and go shopping and all that. Mm-hmm. And he wants us to be this one big happy family. But I'm feeling some type of way about... Um, about, you know, I, I feel guilty. I can't look in her out and have sex in our house and our bed. And oh. I, mean, I, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Are you know. are you out of the closet? Uh, to some people, I am. But he apparently is out of the closet to nobody except for the lovers that he gets a stolen moment with? Huh? He, again. Is he out of the closet partially to anybody besides the lovers no. that he... No, just just me. No, he's strictly thugged out. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, there's only one alternative. If you're feeling guilty, then that is to let him go and remove yourself from the whole situation. But he got a good shot. What does that mean, a good shot? <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, so you're the bottom. Oh, I got... New gay talk, everybody. Good shot. <laughs> that means when he puts it down. Yes, he do. I mean, he a freak. I'm telling you, he a freak. And I'm like... <sighs> I don't know what to do. I don't want to give him up, but I can't keep, like, putting up this facade with her. With her. Well, if you were, so what are you, you thinking about blowing up the spot and telling her? That's what I'm thinking. That, that's what I, that, that, but I don't want her, though, but that's what I, that's what I want to do. But First of all, you won't just hurt her, you'll kill her, but she'll get over it. Does she have, does she have children with this man? Yeah. Oh, boy. How many kids do they have? Two. Oh. How old are they, Approximately. Uh, like five and um, like eighteen months. Damn, a brand new one. Damn. Um, I'll be honest with you, PR. The best thing you could do is walk out of this man's life and find another man with a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you break both. I, I mean, mean yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to do that because I, I was in a situation like that before, and the baby mama bust my windows. I'm not even trying to go. Do that exactly, anymore. exactly. I mean, and you can't avoid hurting her um, by by telling her that you're with him, and then he, you never know. I mean, he might want to kick your behind because now you just not messed up with a girlfriend, but he has two kids by this woman. They're family. Right. I hate men like that. Man, I hate men like that. I know. I mean, why can't I find somebody that's just, I mean, why I keep finding all these men with these baby mamas? Why Forget the I baby's just... mama. The, the root of it is you keep finding men who are on the down low. Find a gay man who ha- is happy embracing being gay 24-7. But I don't like them. They act, I don't want no feminine man. I want a thug. You don't want a what? A feminine man. A man that switched like a woman. I want a thug. Hmm. I don't know what to tell you other than, you know, leave him alone. Find another man with a good shot. You can't avoid hurting her. Thank you, PR. PR. Thank you, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm. He sounds like he can cook. <laughs> you know, afterwards, you go in the chick kitchen, pull out the cornmeal, fry up some fish or something. He said, thank you, baby. Um, shout out to Tanya on line number five. She has a question for which ugh, I do not have the answer. Um, Tanya's 30. Uh, she wants to know, how do you get over losing a parent? Hi, Tanya. Hi. Um, I don't know what to do, Wendy. It's like the holidays are coming. Yeah. I lost my mother seven months ago. Yeah. This is your so, first first Christmas and Thanksgiving without her? Yeah. You're going to go visit the grave site? Hmm? You're going to go visit the grave site? I actually haven't been yet. Hmm. Since she's passed, I haven't went. Yeah. It'll take you a moment to get to terms with that, I guess. A lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so well, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know if I should celebrate with my family or I really just want to stay home and call in my bed. Then, well, you do what you want to do because grieving is an individual thing. Do not let your family tell you, oh, come on, girl, come over here, come over here. You do, Tanya, what you want to to do. Your mother would have wanted it that way. I know. But you know, sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. I really do because I'm Why don't you enroll in shrink classes? Or why don't you enroll and go see somebody? Sooner than later. Like as soon as we hang up the phone. Okay. You know, go go to a shrink and you do, you spend Thursday how you want to spend Thursday and you spend December 25th how you want to spend it. But don't wallow in grief so long that it pulls the rest of your life down. Do you have people who directly rely on you like children? 
Tanya? No. Do you have a boyfriend or a husband? Mm-mm. Okay. So then you can really call your own shot for the holidays. Um, but I would say start with finding a shrink. Plan on doing what you want to do only for this holiday. You know, next holiday, you know, your mother is still gone and she's not forgotten, but doggone it, you cannot waller in grief. But I, I think that um, that you get a pass for this holiday season to spend it just the way you want. Thank you. You're very welcome, Tanya. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys, we're going to continue on with the break. When we come back, I'm taking more of your telephone calls. I've got some really interesting um, ask or um, advice hour faxes here that I want wanted to acknowledge. And um, thank you to Dr. Janine Downey once again on Park Street in Montclair, New Jersey. Image Dermatology is the name of her practice. She is wonderful and she's experienced and, and she's my girl. All right, so keep it where you got it. It's Wendy until 7 on BLS. Down the NYC. Listen, Wendy. Yes. I think you have to put on that recording of your saying that word. I think it's necessary. Fire! Daddy! <laughs> I love that, Wendy. Come on, fire. It's Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams experience. <laughs> Hey, everybody, during the um, Hour of Truth today, of course, we're going to gossip our way through about Sean Robinson from Access Hollywood and her new man. <laughs> we'll also uh, talk about Christina's wedding and um, Sanai and Denzel and Hallie and Michael and Brittany and Justin Timberlake and the murdering trial. Plus, I've got information on how you can audition to become a key player in the Shaka Khan movie, the movie about her life being directed by Debbie Allen. Uh, FYI, um, auditions are being held in New York uh, this coming Wednesday. So anyway, it's advice hour. And um, dear Wendy, I was dating this guy. When I was 16 and he was 29, he lived in New York and I lived down south. We were together for two years. He had more than three kids, an ex-wife, and a few babies mamas. Young girls can be so stupid sometimes. What the hell? She's only 16. Anywho, she says, he decided the relationship was too much for me to handle. Thank God he put you out of your own misery. And he broke things off. But leading up to the breakup, he was extremely inconsiderate and cruel. We have no kids together. I just turned 20, and I never seriously dated since that point. Wendy, point blank, I never did nothing to him but love him and give him my personal best. My heart is harboring love and hate. To add insult to industry, he, it, to add insult to industry, in, Jury. He walks around town with these dusty girls with no jobs and they don't have a clue. He even told me that he won't, that she won't last, meaning his, you know, various girlfriends. Wendy, what's up with that? I just moved to New York about two months ago and I'm doing extremely well for somebody 20 years old. I haven't seen one girl up here who's on to par with me. I don't get it. Any words of wisdom? No, you're just as stupid as the other girls. You're 16 years old with a man with three kids and an ex-wife and a few babies' mothers. I hope you'll smarten up. Welcome to New York. Oh. And I'm, I'm glad that you listen. And if what I just said uh, will make you turn, oh, well. She's calling us stupid. But she's the dummy. Up to New York now, following this loser around. And she's saying, if you were so on par, then you wouldn't even be thinking about a man like that at this particular point in your life. I'll even chalk it up to being 16 and stupid back when you were doing it. But now, welcome to New York. Smarten up. Oh, boy. Line number six. We're going in. 34 years old. I bet you do want to stay anonymous. You got your co-worker pregnant. Now what you going to do? I have no idea, Ma. Damn. What's your I'm ho- shook. What's your home life like? You know what, Wendy? I got this 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 beautiful five-year-old daughter, right? Oh, boy. I mean, I, I own a crib. I, I have brand new cars. I live out on Long Island. But yeah, I, uh, the, the relationship turned so damn bad that when I pull in my driveway, my stomach hurt. Okay. You know, I run security at a nightclub. I work two jobs. I make sure the woman's comfortable. Yeah. But she works, too. She has she has money, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the point is, I work so she can have any and everything. Right. But every time I pull in the damn driveway, my stomach hurt. So I found out. All right, you know, Spanish chicks, they don't know no English. Damn near no English. Damn. She just got a damn green card. Not even probably like a month ago. Right, right, right. And this shit happened. So, I, I mean, I'm going to court tomorrow for this for... 
a blood test. I'm, I'm trying to fight it. Did she already have the baby? Yeah. Wow. The baby's beautiful, huh? Of course. Well, well, I mean, I mean, you, so you just have to worry about taking care of two kids. Now, with your baby's mother that you live with, why don't you just dead that relationship if you don't want to work on it? See, I agree with you 100%, and that's something that I do want to do. Uh -huh. But at the same time, when she got pregnant and I said I'd be there forever uh -huh. and I'd take care of her, I'm... I'm Saying the mortgage, I'm doing all of this. Whatever. Stuff. I mean, that's what they make divorce and breakups for. You know what I mean? The relationship has changed. Yeah, your, daughter, your daughter is now five years old. Now, I can give you a quick way to get rid of her. You tell her that your coworker with the brand new green card just had your baby. Is she be, what? No, Wendy, did you ever see that movie, that movie uh, Motive? No, you know, I don't want to. Uh, and, and, and long story short, the, the one brother goes to jail, the other brother dies. Okay? Damn, no good. Damn. No good. Well, I mean, um, I don't know what to tell you. Your coworker, uh, where where does she work? That she can't even speak any English. Was she like a bartender or a dancer or something at one of the clubs? What happened? <laughs> what does your uh, what is your pregnant co your coworker that just had the baby? Right. What does she do that you guys work together, but she speaks no English? No, she works in the back. Wendy, she oh. just she just works in the back in the warehouse. Oh. I just. I don't know. Damn. Well, I mean, but just be prepared to take care of two kids. I think for 2006, you need to be real with yourself. Oh, I'm going and, to have to do that. that. That goes without saying. Yeah, and get rid of uh, your baby's mother. And make you know sure what? I think, I, think I, I need to just give it a both of them to have it and start all over that song. Well, yeah. I mean, because so. you don't have a relationship with the coworker. You simply had sex with her. You got her pregnant. Exactly. So be prepared to take care of your financial and emotional responsibilities. Oh, well, God got that in hand, so I'm not worried about it. All right. Well, take care. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Later. Michelle's on line number seven. She's uh, getting a divorce, and she wants to know where to meet straight men. I don't know. It's all a crapshoot, Michelle. I'll be honest with you. It's Hi, a, Michelle. Yeah, it's a crap. It's a crapshoot. You can't meet straight men in church. You can't meet straight men in the gym. You can't meet straight men at the red light. I mean, you, it's all a crapshoot. You, oh, you, nev you never know what you're getting. Okay. Well, I want to say I love your show and you're great. Thank you. How long were you married? Uh, about uh, eight years. Yeah. So when's the divorce finalized? Uh, any day now in process. Oh, gosh. I know you're happy. Well, you know what? I would concentrate. I mean, it's nice to think about where to meet men, but if you concentrate too hard, it just doesn't happen like that. Just kind of let it happen. In the meantime, um, work really hard on figuring out how you contributed to the demise of your marriage because it's never just one person's fault. But do you know what, Wendy? He was a cheater. I was going to say, even if they cheat, even if there's a baby produced out of the cheat, it's never... Just one person's fault. Like, like, there. Why was? Why did he cheat? Now Let you, me tell you that call that you had uh, all throughout the marriage. He cheated with somebody else. He all he had another woman on the side all mm, the time. Mm. Mm hmm. So I emphasize so, with some, that other something, caller. Maybe something about you that attracted a, a man where he thought he could get over on you the whole time. I mean, Vegas? was the sex? Did you deliver on the sex? And if you uh -huh. did, did you treat him like a child as opposed to a man? Were you supportive of his career? Were you supportive of the way he looked? Were you a, a nag about pick up this and pick up that? I mean, you know, they say, the best psychiatrists always say that <clears throat> even if a man has cheated and even if he's produced a child and he's been cheating the whole relationship, there's something in there about yourself that you can correct for your next situation. So you figure out what that is and don't concentrate so hard on meeting the men. They're out there. The straight ones too. Keep it where you got it, everybody. Our truth is next. Wendy, man. Michelle? Yeah. You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. So call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Uh -oh. oh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. A struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that where? Back whoa. there. 
She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dad! 30-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. What's up? This is Jack A. Harry. What's up? This is your fabulous girl, Takara. What's up? This is Dr. Ian Smith, and you're listening to the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy, Wendy Williams. Uh, all right. How dare you? <laughs> that was goose. I was just in the other room doing, um, doing you know, the experience is coming drops for a brand new radio station we're about to sign on. And this radio station art. Yes. You know, like 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 in, in Philadelphia, Power 99 is number one for hip-hop and R&B. Yes. You know, in Connecticut, the, the majority of radio stations that I'm on, their the radio station tagline is, you know, number one for hip-hop and R&B. Yes. Not this new station. I can't even say the city that it's in, I don't think, until we actually sign on. But the, the ink is already dry. I'm doing the drops. It's non-stop hip-hop. Oh, they're like, F the R&B. Just non-stop hip-hop. Let's get wow. it on. Non-stop hip hop. Non-stop. Yep, and we're at the afternoon show. Non-stop hip hop. Oh, wow, that's good because you are hip hop. It's in Central United States, so um, we're on. Um, that means they're an hour behind us. But um, non-stop hip hop. Oh. I'm like, damn, I'm not used to this. There's no R and B to smooth it out. It's just non-stop hip hop. Let the party begin. It's hardcore. <laughs> we should fit right in there. Yes, yes. With our gangster talk. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> non-stop hip hop. I love that. And here in New York, of course, um, our radio station here is uh, Today's R&B and Classic Soul. But we play the nice music, yes. like a nice Usher song, a nice Vivian Green song. That's Today's R&B. And then the Classic Soul is like, you know, the Dells, Marvin Gaye, like that. So, boy, this show has range. We go from the Dells to nonstop hip-hop. Oh, ah. easy. <laughs> I love that. Okay, you guys, I want to share some very, very sad news. And this is a Wendy Williams exclusive. Oh, boy. Hit the other music. Oh, no. Oh. Actor Morris Chestnut. Well, easy. <laughs> and his wife, Pam. Oh, no. Are divorcing. A spokesperson for the couple says that the marriage is being dissolved due to irreconcilable differences. In other Morris Chestnut news, he's uh, going to be on TV. He's getting his own show on NBC. The show is called Dante. And Morris will play a former football star whose ego is too big. And he's out of touch with reality. Isn't that the In the House show? That I, 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 I say that. I say that. I say that. That's okay. Pam needs money for the kids. Oh, yeah. She and the kids. Oh, mm -hmm. Morris, you were just here about two months ago. Hey, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut. No. How you doing? No. How you doing? Oh. And Art, wasn't it you who said that it's just too good to be true? It's just too good to be true. So you think um, he's gonna run right You think Boris is next? Oh, don't say that, please don't. But I'm just saying. But you know, you you be making predictions. Easy. Oh God. Morris gonna run rampant in Hollywood now. Yeah, Morris Chestnut is on the loose, ladies. Uh -oh. Stand in line, take a ticket. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder if there's another child involved. No, nope, irreconcilable difference it is. So that's that's the story we're going with. He's going to have to come by the show. Well, hopefully he will to um, support his new sitcom, which has been previously done by LL Cool J. But we can learn to forget about it, Morris, if you come by and you give us a few more exclusive words on that divorce. And don't forget, we're on a new radio station. Non-stop hip-hop. Oh! Non-stop hip-hop. Turn me up. All the All the <laughs> We, I think we start that station next week. Oh, boy. Non-stop hip-hop. Non-stop hip-hop. 
Oh, they're going to love us in this new place. All right. Um, General Motors uh, just eliminated 30,000 jobs. They're closing nine North American assembly uh, plants. And that'll all be done. The closing of these plants will be done by um, 2008. The 30,000 jobs will be completed by 2008, but they're starting that now. Um, this is all a part of them to, um, you know, get the production line with the demands and, you know, the positioning as the world's biggest automaker. They took a $14 billion loss this year so far. Jeez. Uh, well, 30,000 jobs represents 9% of, yeah, the workers. No, that's a big percent. What, are you kidding me? I don't care about Robert Blake. Like, I like I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, he did it. Too bad they found him guilty, to be innocent to begin with. Now he was found guilty of murder, and he's been ordered to pay $30, or $30 million. But as you know, you can be ordered to pay whatever. The question is, will you get the money? I mean, you know, an order means absolutely nothing. Speaking of order, I got to order me one of the Mariah Carey dolls. They're only going to be about 30,000 of the, or excuse me, they said 3,000 made. So now there's 2,999 left. I got to get me one of them. Halle Berry is following in the footsteps of Madonna and Demi Moore. She's the new face of Versace. Mm-hmm. Beautiful portraits with slightly messy hair uh, with the wind machine. Her pictures are going to look very glamorous. Very nice. Good for you, Hallie. In the meantime, I guess you want to hurry up and shoot those because in one of those magazines, the Star and Inquirer or whatever, they use the word bump, which I hate for the, you know, the baby bump, the bump. And so Hallie's walking with Michael Ealy and they have the arrow pointing at her belly saying, look, the bump. Mm. So... Congratulations again, Hallie. We talked about it before, but um, you and Michael, she said she'd never get married, but apparently she's like whipped him into submission is what big people are basically saying, that, that she found a fixer-upper and she's making no bones about saying that, that she's fixing him up, like she's changing his hair. So far, I just have still seen him with the same naughty hair, but um, she's changing his hair. She's changing his his clothing perspective and, and I guess, you know, rejudging how he approaches his acting. You know, she's, she's changing. A fixer-upper spells divorce before it even happens. But, you know, I mean, she's a well, can short of a six-pack. She's going to make a crazy mother. She's going to make a crazy wife. She's a crazy woman. You understand what I'm saying? No, I get it. That's not good. They said she was controlling. Yeah. In the past, so yeah. I get it, but. But, see, with Michael Ealy, he's probably just happy to be there. But, see, that's what we thought about Eric Benet. Yeah, he'll straight. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I know. Damn. Who wants to be part of an open, open casting call being held in New York City on Wednesday? The reason why I'm letting you all know about this is because I know that we have many people who listen to us from out of town. Soon to be a new city where it's not stop hip hop. Oh, not stop oh, hip hop. <laughs> I was just telling everybody at the, that the new station, and no, I didn't say where or what city, but that I can't believe that it's nonstop hip hop. Like, they don't even water it down, but say R&B. No R&B. It's just nonstop hip hop. Don't stop. Yes. <laughs> hip hop. Gunshot. Don't stop. Yeah. How you doing, Buster? Your tan is lovely. Thank you. I told you. Clarion. Yes. Jalai. Um, hydrate. Hyd hydrating. Jalay. Look like you've been sitting in Puerto Rico for a week or two. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so who wants to be an open casting call 
uh, being held Wednesday um, for Debbie Allen's screenplay, Through the Fire, based on the life and music of Shaka Khan. I'm going to tell you, one time only, auditions will be held Wednesday, beginning at, this Wednesday, November 23rd, beginning at 11 a.m., and the auditions are going to go um, till 3 p.m. The auditions are happening at Nubian Heritage, which is located at 2039 Fifth Avenue, 2nd Floor. Between 125th and 126th Street. That's 2030. Where did I say 2039? I meant 2037. 2037 Fifth Avenue on the second floor. Between 125th and 126th Street. And it's the Rags to Riches story of Shaka Khan, narrated by Shaka herself. And they're casting for the following characters. Um. Well, geez, I'm not reading all this down. Men and women, you're all needed. I see a male between 20 and 30. Sky, her ex-boyfriend, who never understood her obsession with music. Mm, Shaka's lead choreographer. Between uh, 30 and 40. And here's another male named Don. He's between 30 and 40. Uh, Nikki, that's a female, in her 20s. Somebody named Kat, another female, Latina, in her 20s. And somebody named Desire. Who's that? Shaka's lesbian lover? Desire. No, it's a female. And no, I don't know anything about her being a lesbian. Um, a female African-American between 30 and 40. So uh, to all you uh, thespians, I wish you well in your audition. Wednesday from 11 p.m. Uh, excuse me, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Nubian Heritage, 2037 Fifth Avenue. In New York City. In... More Halle Berry news. Isn't Halle part of X-Men? Yes. Um, okay. Well, guess who? Well, this is not actually about Halle. It's about Mercedes from America's Next Top Model. Apparently, she's been casted as uh, part of the X-Men movie, the next one. She's going to play the role of M. Oh. Do you know who that is? Have you ever seen these movies? No. Well, this is the third one that's about to come out. Yeah. Have you? I don't go to the movies. Oh. <laughs> anyway... This third installment of the X-Men franchise is due to be released in May of uh, 2006. And congratulations to Mercedes. I think that's the one who had the lupus, right? Yes. Yeah, good for her. Spud Webb, that little man, five feet seven. He was the point guard um, when he played in the uh, Atlanta, Hawks. Atlanta Hawks. Well, Maxim Magazine's done their list of 25 greatest short dudes of all time. <laughs> and he's on the list. Along with the lead guitarist from ACDC, Angus Young, who's only five feet two. Prince is in it on the list. Yoda's on the list. Kurt Cobain. And Sean Astin. Is that a good list? 25 greatest short men of all time. That's a crazy list. Where's throwing it? No. <laughs> He doesn't make the cut. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I forgot. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. All right, you all. Keep it where you got. I'm going to be taking your telephone calls and stuff. Oh, Morris Chestnut. I need the part of the conversation where he talked about his marriage. I need to um, hear what he said. You think Trev Hollywood can do that, or is he real busy in the back? He can do anything you need him to do. That's Trev Hollywood. I know, but he's working with limited studio usage now. He has help. Mm-mm-mm. Well, we have to talk about Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. I still want to talk about Murder, Inc. And um, Sean Robinson from Access Hollywood and who her new man is. Hmm. Keep it where you got it. My boss came into my office and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I, I don't know what, what. How can I? How should I handle that situation? <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience. Look, I don't know about.
about you, but I ain't got time to be messing around trying to get home for the holidays. My family throws down in the kitchen. You get there too late, you missing out. One year I got stuck in traffic. When I arrived, the only thing left was a bone. And the dog scoped me out like, reach forward and see what happens. Shoot, cousin Tiny killed two turkeys before they finished the blessing. I'm serious, y'all. That's why I love me some Greyhound. They get me where I need to be before the food's all gone. Greyhound is the smart way to travel this holiday season. Buy a ticket in advance or wait till the last minute and go wherever, whenever. It's the quick, comfortable, convenient, and low-priced way to get home for the holidays. Good point, because some of y'all don't need to rush home. Come on now, you know who y'all. Get home and everything's black. Bread, corn. Visit Greyhound.com for up-to-the-minute schedules, routes, and prices. Cranberry sauce. Go more. Green. Go Greyhound. Turkey's just black. Talk about, it's slow smoke. No, try slow burnt, man. As promised, we fulfilled our guarantee. We've given away one hundred and seven thousand dollars in cash. Thank you, thank you, oh my God! But it ain't over yet. The winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. Okay, repeat this. Listen to what the winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e newsletter at wbls.com. Then listen. To win Thursday, December 1st, beginning at 6 a.m. from the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. Yo. Hey. It's uh, BLS 107.5. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. This hour of the Wendy Williams experience is being brought to you by Nissan. Ooh. Nissan. Parts that work. Isn't that their tagline? I hate that I get to say these things and I and blind. um what does it say? Blind, you say you yeah, I say I'm bland, Nissan. Like I like to say the tagline. Yeah. Nissan, you know. How you doing? Oh, or or something. <laughs> Nissan, it is what it is. <clears throat> Nissan, driven to driven. Driven. Is that it? Yeah, I think it's driven. Remember when they used to be top Datsuns? Mm -hmm. And then the Datsun changed mm -hmm. to Nissan? Remember when the Datsun two eighty Z X was oh. the, the the bomb, like mm -hmm. My boyfriend has a Datsy. So New York's ultimate Christmas party with a purpose is on December 17th at the Broadway Ballroom. That's right. It's the WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. We do this party every year. And every year we earmark organizations where money should go because we like to help because we're a caring, community-oriented radio station. Um... This year, the proceeds are going to benefit the anti-domestic violence program Safe Horizons and Day One. The Christmas Party with a Purpose is going to have a full holiday buffet and live entertainment. And you don't want to miss out on your chance to be there. Um, I'll see you there. The whole Wendy Williams Experience staff will be there. The whole Steve Harvey in the Morning staff will be there. The whole Vaughn Harper Experience will be there. Everybody's going to be there. All of our bosses, you can yell at them. You know, you can complain to them or give them a big old hug and say, thank you so much for being consistent in giving away the money. Or, you know, I've listened to you guys since, you know, 1972. You know, they love to hear stuff like that. They love, they love the heritage of this radio station is like no other radio station in this city. And um, it's, it's really fantastic to be working here. I mean, I know, you know, we make a lot of jokes here on the show about, you know, dusty microphones and missing ceiling tiles and no soundproofing. But at the end of the day, this is where I want to be. It's all right. This radio station is uh, it has got a deep, deep history in this city. So um, join us for our WBLS Christmas party with a purpose. It's going to be a fabulous time. Um, 212-307-7171. That's the telephone number for Ticketmaster. You call there and you get your tickets, and I'll see you with bells on. 212-307-7171. Kelly Osborne apparently had her 21st birthday party um, in Las Vegas, and it was a washout, they say, because... Uh, the shipping heir, Stavros, who's dating um, Paris Hilton, but who used to be dating Ashley Olsen. Apparently, he was trashing a room several floors below where Kelly's birthday party was. It apparently started out with a pillow fight, and it ended up with furniture being hurled all around the room, and it got really out of hand, and the sprinklers were set off, sparking a massive evacuation in the hotel. And so this is what um, Kelly says. 
She says, Paris's stupid boyfriend ruined my 21st birthday. It's so unfair. The managers tried to make me pay for it, but I'll have none of it. I said, no bloody way. This... Uh, because I didn't do this. Stavros called, caused all the damage so he can pay. He has enough money. He's a millionaire with too little, uh, too much cash to spare. He's a rich kid and they don't appreciate anything because they grow up with it all. I find it really annoying. Now, this is Kelly Osborne saying this because the sprinklers went off and then all of a sudden everybody had to evacuate the hotel, including her party. Now, I know you might say, well, she's a rich kid, too, but this is what she says about that. I'm not rich. My parents are rich. And they don't throw cash at me. Any money I make myself, I spend on clothes. You don't hear her saying she's doing an adult savings. And she's got no clue. Anyway, she says, Stavros isn't struck off my list of friends yet. Him and Paris are madly in love. So there's nothing I can do about it. So they're all still friends. In the meantime, you ask, what did Kelly Osborne get for her 21st birthday? Keys to a flat in London. Oh. Yeah. But she's not rich. Her parents are. Um, Artie, you know how I feel about this. But I'll just throw this to you. What do you feel about a 42-year-old intern? <laughs> oh, my god, It's different. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's actually 43. You can't be an intern. You're older than me. I, I mean, I can't even... How am I going to tell you to... As a consultant. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, this is what she says. Wendy, I'm a 43-year-old flight attendant. And I've been working at United Airlines for 15 years. After two cuts, I recently lost my pension. I decided to go back to school and get training in a new career. I applied to and was accepted at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, the Westbury campus. I work hard and I'm successfully completing my studies. I graduated with honors last month. The hard work continues. My school is associated with a small talk radio station here on Long Island. They offer the opportunity to broker shows. I'm in the process of getting my talk show off the ground. I don't have a, a premiere date yet because I'm still trying to get advertising sponsors. What the hell? This sounds like something that Goose is familiar with. Yeah. Are you familiar with, you know, buying, mm -hmm. a, buying a block and selling yeah. the, the yeah. time? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a lot of work. How is she going to have time to intern? Yeah, because she need to be. Uh, she needs to be running around getting sponsors. She and, says, "See, while you have a team working for you, I just have me doing. I just have me doing everything: production, sales, booking guests, and I love it. I'm also busy job hunting. I just received an internship at a radio station, but it doesn't begin until next summer. What a blessing it would be for me to be a Wendy Williams intern. Look, I have my own dreams, goals, and visions of my career." I know I have a long challenge and a way to go, but to have the opportunity to work for the Wendy Williams experience would be an invaluable experience. While I'm here on the island getting my career started, I'll be learning the business from the inside from one of the biggest media stars today. She's really brown-nosing, right? <laughs> hey, who knows? Perhaps the queen of all media will help prepare and mentor the princess of all media. Thank you for your time and consideration. Honey, you're older than me. I'm the princess, and you'd be the queen. Oh! <laughs> Jacqueline in Levittown. Hi, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, um, I will say this right now, and congratulations on, on you know, your Connecticut School of Broadcasting and, and so on and so forth. Um, and I'm not that familiar with, with what it takes uh, to get things established on a radio station where you have to sell your own time. But uh, Goose is, and, and Goose says it's entirely too much work. You'll never be focused on, on us. That's number one. Number two, you re, you said you're looking for a job. Now, rem remember, an internship is non-paid. So you'd have to bring your 43-year-old tired bones, and goodness only knows what else she's got going on in her life, whether she has you know, kids, a boyfriend, and stuff like that, in here to make Goose's soup, get Art's <laughs> ginger ale, pick up hair uptown. I mean, th you know, make calls for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh. I mean, just... Get online and, and research mole removal. Clean out the office. Exactly. Uh, I'll I'll put you out of your own misery, Jacqueline. Thank you, and I wish you well, but no thanks. Thank you. It'd be kind of weird. I think some of the interns' moms are about 40, 
Oh, no, I think I already checked. None of the, none of the interns' um, moms are like between 38 and 45, I don't think. Right? Most of the, the intern moms are like 48 and above. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, girlfriend. And I wish you well. That's Jacqueline Price, everybody. You sure, Art? I'm positive. She knows how to use cool edit. Ooh, ooh, oh, look. really? Oh, look. Oh, Extensive, man. specialized Maybe for training in radio and TV. Exceptional skills in producing commercials using cool edit. Maybe for one month. I'm also able to attract a large audience by combining a pleasing personality and voice appeal. Oh, she's looking for a job. Yeah. She wants to try to use the show just to meet Mr. Sutton. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then try to replace champagne after going Oh, hell to the no. no. Oh, hell to the no. Oh, hell to the no. Champagne is legendary. Yes, she is. Or I know. No, I can't even read that. No. Okay. Because I figured out the other thing she's trying to do. Yeah. She knows how to use cool edit. She's got a soothing voice. Yes, she does. We work from 2 to 7, but she'll come in here nice and early to meet Steve Harvey in his office. Oh, please. Next thing you know, she'll be replacing Jackie Reed. Oh, no, not Jackie. Hell, 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 no, 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 no. You must go. Now, I wish you well, Jackie. I think you'd make everybody uncomfortable, though. A 42-year-old intern. I mean, you'd make everybody uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell, I'd be starting to feel like a bit uncomfortable with that one myself. Like, is my, my friend, my big sister, or do I tell her I need another Diet Coke? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, the, there'd be a war in my head all the time. It's enough that we have a few interns that are moms. And even though the girls are in their early 20s, you know, I still have to, I wore in my head like, God, I can't ask her to walk 20 blocks because I know after this radio show, she's got to go home and deal with a three-year-old. But why am I worrying about that? She's the one who wanted the internship. Or maybe do her own show now. She's who, Jacqueline? Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Who replaced Champagne? Yeah. No, I'm not. This is a happy family up here at BLS. We don't need some intern coming up in here. A seasoned woman that's lived. She, I mean, she was a flight attendant. Oh, yeah, so she's pretty. Mm -hmm. Pretty big boot. Coffee, tea, or me, Mr. Sutton? Oh. <laughs> Vinny, can I get you another croissant? Uh -oh. She could become your favorite, Adi. Oh. Oh, Artie can't do anything for her, though. 42, 43 years old, time's a waste, and she's not wasting her time with art. she got to get right to the check writer. Mr. Levingston, is there anything else I can do for you? <laughs> Say? Yes. Hell no, you keep that trouble right out there in Long Island. <laughs> That's trouble waiting to crack the mic. <clears throat> I wish you well, uh, Jacqueline. Oh boy, we gotta talk. We gotta gossip more, and I gotta take some more phone calls. I right, we're supposed to talk to uh, Bill Duke this hour too. Yes, yeah, we'll do it in the next break. All right, all right, everybody. Well, um, we're gonna continue on with this break. It's one hundred seven point five WBLF. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, 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 experience. Okay. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Tyra Banks, um, as I talked with you on Friday, was telling you she's got a new love in her life. His name is Giancarlo. Uh... Marcusini, and no, he's not the guy from that reality show that I thought that I saw him on. He's a 33 year old Italian gelate, gelato maker. That's that's their version of ice cream. And um, this is what Tyra says. She says, "I want to conquer motherhood." Now, she used to date Seal. She got over that, and she and Giancarlo went to Seal and um, and Heidi Klum's wedding together. Uh, she used to take 
uh, date Tiger Woods. She dated Chris Webber. She dated uh, John Singleton. She says, here's a quote. I'm not living in fear that I'll never find love anymore. I want to get married. I want to have kids. And she was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno recently. And she said she was tired of looking for normal guys because she said normal guys like the FedEx man and the UPS, UPS man thought that I had all the money. And they wouldn't even pay for ice cream or chicken nuggets. So here's how she describes the man of her dreams. The man of her dreams is, here's her quote, a guy who's my age, who has a good job and can take me out. Seems easy, but take her out where is the question. And uh, this guy has money, so he can take her out anywhere she wants to go. By the way, that Victoria's Secret fashion show that Tyra uh, modeled for the last time in um, was on CBS December 6th at 10 p.m. I thought Desperate Housewives was another good one last night, everybody. I really did. I was right there at the edge of my seat, loving every minute of it. And, you know, I like where the producers are going. Because while I love Brie Vanderkamp's character, she's not my favorite on the show. But um, they say she's going to be killed off for May Sweeps to zhuzh it up. Hold on. Because when they had the, um, like, who killed JR and, you know, when they kill people off those, those nighttime soaps back in the day. I don't watch the show Lost, but apparently they recently killed somebody off Lost. And it just made the ratings really big. And Marsha Cross is the one who uh, plays Brie Vanderkamp. And she's the one facing the axe. The bosses want to kill her off. Um, and get her out of Wisteria Lane forever. Not one of those fake kill-offs. <clears throat> The writers have a shocking plan. It's going to be during May sweeps. Um, it's a cru- it's very crucial for um, Desperate Housewives to do really well in the May sweeps. Not that it has a chance of being canceled, but they're used to being in a particularly lofty position in TV land. And so, you know, they want to stay that way. So they're planning on killing off Brie Vanderkamp. And it, it works perfectly because she's dating Crazy George, who is a killer. So, why wouldn't George... You know what? Art and I were having a discussion earlier. We were downstairs um, in the lobby at the Starbucks, sipping on our cappuccino, yes. talking about the events of the day. And Art was saying, you know, the more I watch Desperate Housewives, the more I want to kill that black man from the basement for messing up such a great opportunity. And I said, you know what, Art? Exactly. See, it's idiots like that who need to be blacklisted from the whole Hollywood situation. Like, like you don't even need, um, you know... A take two. Because he got kicked off that show for the stupidest thing, flashing. Just flashing and playing. Like, he thinks that he can do like the white boys do. (laughs) Not all white women have the Mandingo syndrome. Right, white girls? Not all of you, you know, long to be slayed by a big black man. And some are just plain insulted by that. And we'll call the cops in a minute. So that's what's going on with that show. Oh, you know what? Oh, please. Line number four. <clears throat> Tisha cheated on her boyfriend and had a baby with someone else. No. Hey. Yes. Hey, Tisha. Taisha. Taisha. She's 22. Oh, by the way, speaking of Taisha, did you know that our ex-intern, Kaisha got married and had a baby? What? Exactly. <laughs> Kaisha, who was not only interning here, she went to the Bahamas with me and my family, you know, as because she babysat also for our, our kid, you know, uh, on weekends. And Mrs. Lopez, you know, she wouldn't be there. And we took her to the Bahamas and everything. Mm. And now she's 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 married and she's about to have a baby any minute now. Wow. Yeah. I guess I messed up, right? Well, now you, Taisha, darling, <laughs> are in a whole other situation. Yes, I am. So how long were you with your boyfriend? Since I was, what, 16? Okay. It started off as pen pals, then was visits and collect phone calls mm-hmm. and because he was incarcerated. And at the end, it was like, mad people was telling me, like, girl, you're wasting your time. You're too young. Go out and have some fun. And it's- listening to other people and then being young, dumb, and full of cum. I went out and you know did me and, and so, had a baby and so dummy and so now so now he's still in jail. No, he's not. He's been home for almost like four years, three years, something. 
but my, as of now, he doesn't live in Jersey. And it seemed like, all right, we're still speaking to each other off and on, and he wants me to tell him how I feel and this and the third. He's telling me a little, but he's not telling me enough to where he's saying, Ty, yeah, I still love you. I'm going to be with you. He's not saying any of that. Because the most thing that he has said was, well, if you lived closer, then maybe we could have worked something out. And he, you know, loves my daughter to death. Like, All right, yeah. where, where's your daughter's father? Uh, he's locked up now, girl. Oh. He's locked up, and that's a complete no, no. That's why I know I completely made a mistake. What, like, how yeah, can I? What do you do with yourself, um, Taisha? I work at the post office. Okay. And I go to school. Yeah. And I feel stuck, Wendy. I mean, I don't even want to. Ever since stuck, we started speaking to each other. Stuck at 22. Stuck at 22. Isn't this a blip? <laughs> she, she feels stuck. Ever since we started speaking to each other again, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, and then when we had sex, I was like, I'm not having sex with anyone else, and I have it. I feel stuck. He got me all over. Well, he again. has. He's not in. He's not in town, though, right? No, he lives in Washington. Yeah. Mm, the how you doing, city? Huh? Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> so, what's your question to me? What should I do, Wendy? I'm trying my best not to think about <clears throat> him and stuff like that. But that my heart belongs to him. Well, I'll be honest with you. If you're considering moving to D.C. to be with him, no, I'm not. That's okay. a complete no, no. Okay, so then you really don't have a choice because if he doesn't move up here and you don't move down there, then you don't have a relationship. Number one. Number two. What does he do with himself after being uh, incarcerated? Oh, he's doing his thing. I mean, he's working. He's a man. I mean, he got in trouble a while ago, but, mm -hmm. you know, he's a man. He's <clears throat> taking care of whatever he has to take care of. It's like that. Well, I, w I would say that um, if I were you, I would focus more on Taisha at this point than I would on the man. Wendy, man. I met up with this guy. We were together we were at his house, and why do you think his thing wouldn't work? You think maybe he's... How you doing? The Wendy Williams... 107.5 WBLS, New York. As you regular listeners know, from time to time, we have special guests here in the studio. Y'all, what's up? This is Charlie Wilson. This is A. Marie. What's up, what's up? This is Eric Benet. What's up? This is Shanice. Yo, what's up? This is your boy M.H. Marcus Houston, and you're listening to my girl, the beautiful Miss Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Holla at your boy. Good. Uh, we got to stop this and start it again. I love this song right here. This is Trey Songs, and he's performing at the Dons and Divas 2005, December 22nd. Yeah, yeah. More details on the way about the big party. Let's lay back and listen to Trey Songs on VLS. Poppin', it's your boy Trey Sons, and you already know what you're listening to. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. What's up, everybody? Wendy Williams and Mary J. Blige. What more can I say? All righty. Matthew McConaughey was voted the top of the list. For People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. He is sexy with his hair plugs and his tousled hair plug hair. They had a whole bunch of pictures of him dating through the years. And as, as his hairline went back and then all of a sudden it was brought forward again. And then they had a hair plug specialist, a doctor who was analyzing the pictures. And he said, no question about it. Matthew's had some, you know, hairline work done. They say he doesn't wear deodorant, though, which is like, ugh. but anyway, that's your sexiest man alive. And Chris Tucker is reuniting with Jackie Chan officially to do the third rush hour. Wendy, 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 why would you ruin the upcoming episodes of Desperate Housewives for people who who watch it? Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I ain't know that. Wendy. You may suspect, but you don't know for sure. You are so stupid. What? No, I, I don't know for sure. I got it from the Hollywood Reporter, though. They know. Not only that, but it would make sense. Brie Vanderkant with that crazy old George, and they do need to kill somebody and make it interesting. And it needs to be more than that splaboo that was living in the basement. Uh-oh. I got a request from Samantha in Newark, New Jersey. Do it again. Do it again. Nonstop hip-hop. Oh. Nonstop hip-hop. Nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. 
Uh oh. And here's what Adrian Lloyd says. He's out in Arizona about the 43 year old intern. He says about the 43 year old intern, go for it. Being an ex flight attendant, think how worldly she must be. She has lived. Mm. <laughs> Dear Wendy, I haven't spoken to you in a while, so you know that the drama is on in the industry. Don't forget R. Kelly's trial starts on December 6th. Thank God. And oh yeah, Mary's going to be on Tyra's show today. Oh, that's from Kim. Mary J. Blige on Tyra Banks today. Hmm. Wendy, how you doing? Shout out to all the intern ladies. What's up, Miss Hardy? Uh, my reason for faxing is that I heard that Denzel and Paulette are going splitsville wendy are you co-signing on this or have you spoken about it and i missed it yeah we spoke about it you missed it but yeah they're divorcing and um coincidentally this just in from atlanta snia latham just had a baby what the baby's father is with his other kids and his wife Sanai is the mistress. The baby's father used to be cool with Omar Epps, but now not so much. Everyone, everyone knows the baby's father. She was doing press for Alien vs. Predator when she was pregnant. Sanai has been having a long secret relationship with Denzel Washington. Notice she was out of the limelight for a while. What? Mm, that's from Erica. Erica's in Milwaukee, but she um, she got this from... Atlanta Gossip, which they bill as Atlanta's best source of news on local and national celebrities, politicians, athletes, and more. Well, um, I don't know if this baby is Denzel Washington's. I don't see Denzel Washington being great friends with Omar Epps. So, therefore, that makes me feel like, well, maybe it's somebody other than Denzel's. Although, after 22 years of marriage, I could understand where Paulette could just be fed up and a baby has nothing to do with it. But I can also see her putting up with about 10 more years if a baby didn't interrupt things. You know what I mean? So, I don't know what to say. All I know is that Sinai is a pathetic woman. And, you know, because whether it's Denzel's or whether it's the other married man's with the kids, she's a, she's a pathetic woman and a poor excuse of a jump off. Especially because it's usually the broke jump off that wants to go on, you know, and have the baby. The broken, downtrodden one, which I can understand why, why Free would want to have um, Jay-Z's baby. You know what I'm saying? Well, nothing going on in the career front. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And she was playing pay those splabu pennies over there at, at BET. There's nothing left. You know what I mean? Her best money shot is to have Jay-Z's baby. But Shania Latham, I forgot what her mother does. Her mother has her own money in her own right. And then the father, Stan Latham, his name is on everything. <clears throat> so why she would go on and pull a stupid move? Well, you know what it, that probably is? It's probably a product of two parents being so damn busy that she never got a hug. Never knew what it was like to be, you know, hugged and loved without, you know, a Mercedes key attached to it or something like that. Which you know and I know that that just opens the doors for an emotionally retarded person like a needy needy pathetic you know all she wants is the standard hug and her hug comes you know closed circuit tv from europe and oh baby by the way you know ask maria consuelo to you know give you the keys that i left in the cheerio box and the keys are to you know a new car you know that's a hug yeah. And baby, I'll see you after Christmas on the closed circuit TV there. I'll see you after Christmas. You know what I mean? Mm-mm-mm. Pathetic woman. A pathetic, pathetic woman. Let's take phone calls. Boy, they really do know how to bootleg um, in white people uh, land. Because, listen to this. Tommy Lee's CDs, Tommy Land the Ride, were shipped over to the U.K., to be sold, uh, sold, and they were, you know, waiting in the storage house. Somebody came in and stole all of them from the storage house. So that's not just bootleg. That's like the real deal, except now sold in the street. Hello. You know what I mean? Um, yes, hi. How are you? Okay. Good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day. Uh, who is this, Wendy? Yeah. 
Oh, hi. I'm trying to be the caller for uh, um, 520. No, 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 no. The, the winning uh, ended last week. But we, oh. but, but keep it here at WBLS New York because we have some more winning um, coming up beginning December 1st. Oh, okay. All right. You thanks, got it. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's Obi. Hey, Obi. Wendy, I wanted to uh, address the, the advice that you had given the 43-year-old uh, flight attendant. Yes. I don't know if this means anything, but I think in about maybe 15 years, these words are going to haunt you. What's that? <laughs> Especially when uh, uh, the baby's grown and you decide, oh, I think I want to go into brain surgery. Or something like that. And Changing then, a career? Yeah, and then having someone tell you, oh, no, 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 you're too old to spend in, to be an intern at a hospital. Well, no, 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 but, but hospital interns, they get paid. Like, it's 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 the word intern, but in actuality, it's, a, you know, it's a whole nother level. Oh, no, 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 I, I understand. I'm yeah. clear on that, but I mean, just the, just the idea that this woman uh, wanted to change directions in her life. Yeah, no, but she's doing the right thing. It's, you know, she's got, she's in the Northeast Broadcast School. Yeah. She just graduated last Last month, right, right. You know, she so she's preparing herself. She, yes, she's preparing herself, right. and um, and it's just that we don't have any uh, use for her here on our show. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean that she won't do well. She already has, as you heard, her own radio show that she's about to start on the Long Island radio station that the broadcast school is a part of. Once she sells all of her airtime as the salesperson, then she'll put on her other hat and become the radio personality. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting phenomenon that's coming up now. All of these baby boomers yes. are deciding. Okay. I'm I want, to, I want to turn left instead of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've raised my kids. Uh, I've, you know, had the home, had the car, the whole nine. And now I want something that appealed to me in an earlier life, whatever. Well, you know, and I would say for somebody like that, as opposed to starting out interning for a radio station, why doesn't she try to get, like, a real job at a real radio station? Uh, for instance, in the sales department or something like that. I mean, just intern. Look, here, this just came in from Jay. Jay says, what is wrong with that woman, Jacqueline? Although there's nothing wrong with being a 43-year-old intern if she's trying to change her life. But what was she thinking? She's trying too hard, and she played her hand. As you were reading the facts, I knew exactly what your response was going to be. Hell no. And you were right. She played herself with the princess of the radio-ish. <laughs> she should know that at 43, it wouldn't go over well. Right. It wouldn't go as smoothly as if it was 23. It, well, yeah. <laughs> and even then, I'd be like, slow down, Sally. I was just, well, I was just a little concerned. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. She, the, those words, they're sounding slightly discriminatory. No. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, um, they aren't, except in terms of being a free intern um, here at the show, because th I know exactly what is asked of the interns. And while they're constantly learning regarding radio, some of the physical stuff right, it's uh, very demanding. is very is very demanding. And, yeah. and, and a 43 year old woman would consider it demeaning. Like, you know, she just came in from outside. It's 32 degrees. She was down the block getting soup for eight people. Now I'm sending her back down the block because she forgot two soups. And then a third time because she forgot spoons. And I don't want her to wash off spoons from within the station. Now, you, what 43-year-old woman worth her salt is going to do that? Come well, up. It depends. It could, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, one who, who's really hungry, who is really, really hungry for, for what she wants. I mean that's the only that's the only other person I can think of that would that would be willing to do that. All right, so she, I've, I've known a few. So <laughs> yeah, so she's she's going to work really hard at her um, internship, which starts this coming summer, uh, and she's going to work really hard on her Long Island radio station. And you know who knows? She might already have it in place where she does not have to worry about next month's rent or you know Ex can, exactly. So there you have that. I mean, there there but there are pluses and minuses. You know, you have the maturity, you have yeah. the, the the whole the secure. Uh, level that that most women reach at that at that age. Right. So, you know, there's, there's some off and ons on that. But but you know, keep on, Wendy. I still love you. I'm I'm gonna keep listening to you. Thank you, Obi. Carry on. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget, everybody, tomorrow the American Music Awards come on TV, and Lindsay Lohan and Will Smith and Missy Elliott are all a part of the celebrities that get these great gift baskets that they always give out, you know, for award shows. This year's American Music Awards gift uh, basket is worth about $45,000, and it includes great stuff, including clothing, perfumes, watches, blackberries, and other various electronics. But one of the things that this year's basket includes for some very special VIPs, including Will and Missy... Um, ownership of an acre of land on the moon. <laughs> Whoa. Art, are you here? Mm -hmm. 
Did you hear me? I heard it. I'm still trying to process it. Well, the moon ownership is being done by a company called Lunar Federation. And they explain that uh, they have the first private mission to the moon, thereby allowing it to create a moon government, this organization, and moon land security rights. And uh, so there's Missy. She's got an acre on the moon. The 33rd annual... American Music Awards happen tomorrow night. Cedric the Entertainer is hosting. And I'm sure we'll all be watching. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the people poll question during advice hour. Damn, damn, but damn me. Okay. Friday's question was, have you ever witnessed unethical practices at work and reported these practices? I am so shocked. 10% of people said yes. 90% said no. I thought it would be more like at least 25% of people, you know, would say yes. Here's the people poll question for tomorrow. Do you have a will? Do you have a will? Yes or no? Go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com and uh, let us know. Thanks. Christina Aguilera got married over the weekend. Good for her. Our dirty girl married her dirty boyfriend, or now her husband, Jordan Bratman. She was wearing a Christian LaCroix gown, and they exchanged matching wedding bands. The same guy who did her engagement ring, a five-carat stunner, did the wedding bands. And her bridesmaids all wore Kaya Miller-designed gowns. That Kaya Miller, you know, is a Stevie Wonder's wife. Christina wore her hair pulled back in a tight bun with lots of jewelry and flowers in it. There were 130 guests, including Sharon Stone. And uh, she's 24. He's 28. Take that, Brittany. (laughs) So congratulations to friend of the show, Christina Aguilera, and her new husband, Jordan Bratman. You guys keep it where you got it. I still got to tell you, Sean Robinson from Access Hollywood's new man. Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the kegels. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? Uh, I don't know, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams Experience. It's just about that time of year. Time for another pate. A WBLS party with a purpose. Last year, Fantasia, John Legend, Keith Sweat, and Brian McKnight sold out weeks before the event, causing many to be left in the cold. Don't let that happen to you. This year will be even bigger and better. We'll begin with a full holiday buffet. Then Chuck <laughs> Chill Out gets the party started. Started with your favorite WBLS personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob. This is Champagne. Good boy, David Levy, rocking you and popping you. And this is Mark Jordan. Then get ready when Jaheim hits the stage. It's going to be a party, y'all. <laughs> and just at it, Vivian Green. <laughs> Along with Donnell Jones. Mark your calendar for Saturday night, December 17th. It all goes down to the Broadway Ball with the Marriott Marquee Midtown. Tickets available now at all Ticketmaster locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. The WBLS Christmas Party with a Purpose 2005 is brought to you by our friends at the New York Department of Health, urging all New Yorkers to get their flu shots by logging on to nyc.gov.com to find convenient flu shot locations. It's a party with a purpose. With 107.5 WBLS. <clears throat> Oh, today's R&B and Classic Soul 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, on Thursday, everybody, the experience is off Thursday and Friday, but on Thursday, we're having Dysfunctional Family Thanksgiving with you all. Uh, Trev Hollywood, my stellar production uh, chief, is um, assembling the finest dysfunctional guests and uh, for your pleasure on Thursday, Thanksgiving, between uh, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., um, you'll be able to hear, of course, that Whitney Houston interview, which has become legendary at this point. Um, also, we've got China and Bobby hey. Brown. And, oh, my gosh. Okay, we have the entire Lisa Ray situation from... When she's called the show and I asked her, was she dating the basketball player? What's his name, Mark? Gary Payton. Gary Payton. Um, and then she denied that one to Lisa falling in love and me talking about how she's got this new boyfriend. Then I got a wedding invitation to go to the wedding. Then the invitation is on um, 
DVD. So I got some audio from that and, you know, let you hear the audio of these two, you know, talking about how much, you know, they they're, they love each other and they're getting married and so on and so forth. And now, as you know, the wedding has been, um, well, she says postponed, but I think that that's a, that's a the polite way of saying, you know, they're over. Um, anyway, so we got Lisa Ray um, and I forgot what else uh, he's working on back there, but. We got you for Thanksgiving. I say all that to say we've got you, babe. Are you are you shopping on Black Friday? I am so not leaving the house. I am sitting in the house. I'm entertaining my girlfriends. I'm not going any place. I think it's going to be a madhouse out there. I haven't shopped on a Black Friday. I don't think since I was a kid. And my mother made all the rules. My mother loves to shop. She'll be out all day, and she's a window shopper too. She's got that kind of restraint. Girl, use a window shopper. I can't window shop. You know, if you know, if I'm not buying or if I'm not in a position to buy, then I just I just want to stay in the house. You know, so let's go to the phone. We can go blindly, sure. Oh, by the way, uh, we have fulfilled our one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee promise, but the winning is not over. Make sure that you're listening uh, to WBLS every day, but particularly on December first at six a.m. Steve Harvey's going to give you um, the details that you need to start winning all over again because we're going to be uh, giving away a thousand dollars every hour. But you must qualify to get this money. And the way you qualify is to go on our website at WBLS.com and sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter. Go to our website for more information and keep listening because the winning begins Thursday morning, December 1st at 6 a.m. with Steve. Hi, who's on the phone? Hey, Wendy, it's Carlene. How you doing? How you doing, Carlene? You haven't heard from me in a while. No, where have you been? I've been around, but just crazy busy. I haven't been able to email you or actually fax you in a while. Yeah, what's going on? Not much. My friend Marianne Reed came to your show one time, and I totally missed it. You're, no, she never came to the show. She, yeah. um Marry Your Baby Daddy Day? Oh, okay, yes. And I missed the show. Are you guys going to re-air it anytime soon in the best of? No. It has no. to qualify for a best of. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that was just a conversation with a lady about Marry Your Baby's Daddy. She's a nice woman. Right. But that there were, that wasn't like, you know, Erica Badu, Flavor Flav's kids <laughs> or Old Dirty Bastard's kids. Exactly. See, they're part of the uh, best of um, dysfunctional family show on Thursday. But I heard you guys talking about how you're going to play certain clips of your show, like, on the website. Is that going to be maybe part of it? No. Yeah. No, we, I mean, you know, even when we play those clips, they're to lure people in to listen. Right. You know, you got you got like those those spectacular revelations that really sell the hell out of damn, that's a show I want to <laughs> listen to. And then you just got those regular moments where, you know, they're cute but they're just real regular. Yeah, exactly. Generic, generic. Okay. So she was a nice guest and she's a nice woman, but that wasn't one of those, you know, stunners. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you, Wendy. All right, bye-bye. Okay. That's Carlene. And hey, Marianne. Marianne understands what I'm saying. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today? How are you doing? Good. Oh, by the way, everybody, there is no Laugh Factory this week. The Wendy Williams Comedy Experience will not be on Wednesday. It'll actually be on Thursday. Because I just figured we all need something to do uh, after Thanksgiving. But Wednesday, there's auditions. Uh, Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wednesday, if you happen to go to the Laugh Factory, what, what you're going to find is that there are auditions for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show, and for from six p.m. to eight p.m. and also for models for the Dante Divas Extravaganza. Yes. Mm -hmm. For more information about that, because there's an open call for models for the Dante Divas Extravaganza, as well as uh, 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 Artie, you're going to be one of the judges. I'm going to be judging this week. Yes, I'll be there. You'll be there. All right. So, um, and the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show. Um, we love singers and rappers, and we love freaks, contortionists, people who can do crazy stuff with their body and balance things on <laughs> unusual places and and whatnot. You remember the Gong Show from the seventies? All right. Well, we're redoing it. This is the Wendy Williams Experience. Gong show, yes, which right. means that anything goes. Boing. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that. So, my question is uh, you guys are having information about Sanaa Lathan that she just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Wasn't she just on the Vibe Awards? Her stomach was flat as ever. I don't know. Was she just on the Vibe Awards? Yeah, she uh, gave out an award. She was the first person to introduce an award. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Well, let me see. The Vibe Awards was taped two two weeks ago. It was just on last week. Mm 
Heidi Klum gave birth six weeks ago, and then she appeared on the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Does Sonia Latham have snapback like that? She, no, she is sister. Well, yeah, but she's a sister dealing with a married man, so she, you know, you, she's one of them desperate, crazy broads. So she, they're, therefore, she, huh, excuse me? She could be. Yeah. But, you know, we don't know how true that is. I'm, I'm saying she was looking flat as ever. Hmm. Well, I would hope that she didn't have any baby. I don't think so. I think these are just doesn't, more rumors for you to talk about on the radio. It doesn't does, doesn't take away from that she's uh, she's got potential to be the crazy woman. Yeah, yeah she does. Because honey, she did allegedly uh, over at Paula. She did more gate rattling and talking in that box. Where he at? Where he at? Mm. And and more, you know, hair salon talk about, you know, I'm the main one, and that's just, you know, the wife. Yeah, you know, she like, got that ghetto black woman. Yeah, syndrome. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to say what's up to my sister. Okay. Mel, Mel, what up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good luck to you, Wendy. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy. What's going on, Hey. Girl? Hey. Uh, I love your show. I try to call you all the time. I never get through it. It's the first time. I can't believe it. Well, I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Anyway, I was just calling because remember a while ago you had Carl Payne on? Yes. Okay. I sat next to him in high school. Oh, yeah? The high school performer. He is one of the funniest guys. Yeah, he is. I was calling that show every second when he was on. I couldn't get through. And he's so nice. He's so super nice. We had to get our our... Chairs changed all the time. Our teacher would separate us. Too much laughing. Yeah. <laughs> so much trouble, but I just want to say I love your show. I listen to you all the time. You're awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wendy, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. By the way, um, Cameron is not cooperating with the cops. That's not the dipset way. So, um, you know, the cops want Cameron to cooperate, and he's not. So they still don't know who shot him. Hello? Wendy? Hi. <laughs> JJ was off the hook on the limit day. And by the way, it came on 4.30, not 3 o'clock in the morning. I had to wait up. Oh, okay. And this is what I had to do. You know what? I, I saw it because I set my alarm for 3.30 on Friday night into Saturday morning. Right. But I had to wake up so early on Saturday morning <laughs> that I just ended up, I saw it came on at 4.30. I was like, I'm going to have to go back to sleep. I saw the last 15 minutes of it. He was awful. I felt sorry for him. Yeah. He was pitiful. We're talking about J.J. Walker, everybody. He was on Eliminate on Friday night. You know what? I felt sorry for him when he was up here in the studio. I did. I did. Play his song. You got to play his song. Yeah. Art, hit the, hit the J.J. music. There it is. <laughs> I love it, and I love you, girl. Bye-bye. Thank you for Happy listening. Holidays. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Marcus Houston says he's not ruling out reuniting with um, his former IMX mates. Hello? Hello. Hi. Well, I'll get back to that in a minute. How are you? I'm great. Good. Oh, uh, Wendy, I wanted to know about Lisa Ray because my girlfriend, we're driving home and she's telling me that it's not Gary Payton she's supposed to be married to. No, she's, no. You're, no. What's going on? She's, she was engaged to a um, chief minister from hey. Turk and Caicos. Uh-huh. And the very married at the time, Gary Payton, allegedly, and Lisa Ray were having like this torrid, alleged um, thing going on. Uh-huh. And Gary is now divorced, either either divorced or divorcing his wife. Um, and allegedly, um, it was all to, you know, be with her. And then she went off and she got engaged to the prime minister. And Gary's position was that you will not embarrass me in front of my NBA people. Um, you know, because apparently he brought her out and about and and like that. So on on Thursday on the dysfunctional family show, um, uh -huh. I'm going to play a bit of the wedding invitation and some phone conversations I've had with Lisa. And it all kind of culminates in, well, what it is right now, which is that she's not getting married on December 28th like we all thought. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, love you, Wendy. Well, thank you very much for listening. We listen, we listen to you every day. We 
fly out of work to listen to you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Everybody, keep it where you got it. Uh, the bonus hour is coming up at the top of the hour. I'm going to finish this um, Marcus Houston story, hopefully before then. Bill Duke is calling in, so we're going to talk with him. And, uh, you know, he's in 50s new Get Rich or Die trying. But he also directed Hoodlums and produced. Um, I mean, he's just, he's like a legend in the game. So we'll have a quick conversation with him. And then we'll move on to the bonus hour at the top of the hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLF. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams experience about to pack them up and move them out. I want to thank my dermatologist. She's a wonderful woman. And her name is Dr. Janine Downey. She is located on Park Street in Montclair, New Jersey, right off of Bloomfield Avenue. Her practice is called Image Dermatology. And um, she's listed in directory assistance. I don't have the number right in front of me, but I can tell you that she came in today and she talked about, uh, she extolled the virtues of Botox and Restylane and, you know, mole removal and all of those other things that also can happen at a well-rounded dermatologist's office. You know, um, it's not just about popping pimples anymore. And I particularly wanted to talk about uh, Botox and Restylane because, um, you know, and I realize that this this show we really do have a large audience full of, of you know people from various backgrounds. But um, for for we black people, we all have grown up with the phrase "good black don't crack." Well, you know, yes, it does. And um, and uh, you know, certainly a great dermatologist can help you out with that. And and um, to find out more information about Dr. Janine, you can go online to her website at imagedermatology.com. And uh, I'll see you in the waiting room. I mean, you know, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Janine. Uh, Erica says, she's in Milwaukee. It's Erica again. Hey, Erica. She says, Wendy, Sanaya uh, could have had the baby a month or two ago. The Vibe Awards were taped two weeks ago. It could be true. Monica, the singer, had her baby in May, and it's just being talked about. She's right about that. Oh, and here's somebody angry at me. Wendy, her name is pronounced Sana. You're killing me, but I love you anyway. Thank you. Well, according to a former assistant of Naomi Campbell, and the former assistant's name is Rebecca White, she accidentally walked in and caught Naomi and that British pop star Robbie Williams in the throes of passion in Naomi's apartment that she shared with her then-boyfriend, the racing mogul Flavio Beridor, who went on and had a baby with Heidi Klum, which now Seal is raising the baby. Oh, gosh, it's so scandalous, all of it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whew. Well, Justin Timberlake says, Brittany, no, Brittany, I don't want you back. No, 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 no. I'm really happy with Cameron. I just want you to know as a longtime friend and somebody that I still care about, not in that way, but I care about enough, you need to drop Kevin immediately. Well, Justin called Brittany in early November and told her that he'd seen Kevin Federline out in Los Angeles and Las Vegas with several girls. Brittany knows Justin wouldn't lie to her, especially about something as important as this. And I don't see Justin Timberlake wanting Brittany to be single so he can get back with her. You know. Mm -mm. Um, I think she needs to take this and, and, you know, run with it. You know, she needs to weigh her own opinion and whatnot. But, you know, Kevin Federline's a bum. The veteran um, rap star, Daryl McDaniels, that's D from DMC, um, um, uh, DMC rather from Run DMC. Well, he has ended his 20 year affiliation with Adidas, everybody. He's ready to promote something else. An upscale French line called Le Cog Sporty. Um, he was in. Huh? Art's not in here. Goose is trying to read buttons upside down. Get in here. Hurry up. Let's just see if he's on the same page as me. I just said, Art. Can you 
first of all, can you please stop leaving in the middle of breaks? Goose can't see upside down. It was the commercial. No, it's not the commercial anymore, Art. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. DMC has ended a 20-year affiliation with Adidas. What? That's my Arnie. Mm -hmm. But he is promoting a new upscale French-owned line called La Cogue Sporty. Well, that's not new. Well, it's new to him. Fresh person, Jay Jeff used to do that one. La Cogue? Yeah, back in the day, they used to endorse that one. Okay, well, <laughs> he's endorsing it now. Not even runs athletic, huh? No. Oh, boy. No fat farm. Uh -uh. Oh, boy. So, um, the prosecutors with the ongoing trial against Murder, Inc. will present evidence today, which I guess the courts are closed at this particular point, but regarding the May 2000 shooting involving 50 Cent. Um, oh, see how much he was involved. Oh, yeah. Something about Ja Rule's bodyguard is supposed to be there and Somebody named Daryl Homo Brown. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> Lawyers will allege that Kenneth Supreme Griffin ordered Ja Rule's bodyguard, Robert Son. La you know, you got to have a middle name, Art. Robert Son Lyons to shoot 50. The defense introduces pieces of connecting. Daryl Homo Brown to 50 shooting. <laughs> How he doing? Uh -oh. Okay, you've waited long and hard enough. Where is the Eddie Murphy piece? Uh oh. I mean, where is the Sean Robinson piece? Damn, did I just ruin it? Okay. Eddie Murphy uh -oh. is allegedly dating Access Hollywood weekend reporter Sean Robinson. Wow. She apparently hasn't gotten the memo or she doesn't give a damn because she's still trying to get her weight up in Hollywood. Eddie and Sean recently dated at the Access Hollywood 10th anniversary party. After that, they were spotted at Dave Chappelle uh, at a Dave Chappelle concert. And Sean has been to Eddie's house a few times. As many times as Johnny Gill will allow, honey. Don't bring all that fish up in here. <laughs> All right, you guys. I don't want to get into another story that I can't finish. Oh, one more thing. Sarah Michelle Galar um, and Freddie Prince Jr., that's going to be the next Hollywood couple to split. They're going to split before Nick and Jessica, who seem to be hanging on by a thread. Um, apparently, Freddie's got this new sitcom called Freddie on ABC. Sarah Michelle tells everybody that she hardly ever gets a chance to see him anymore. And when, when she does see people and they ask, how's Freddie doing? And so then her answer was always, you tell me. I hardly ever see him. And between the sitcom and, of course, his other life. Uh oh. Okay. Divorce is imminent before the spring. They'll be announcing something. Watch. Yeah. All right. Does anybody watch the show, Freddie? If she, can't she just wait out for the... The, the, the show to be canceled, then he'll be back home playing house homo. I mean, house husband. Ooh. <laughs> all right, you all. I have to go. I love you all for listening today. God willing, we'll be back again to, to, together tomorrow. All right. Thanks. Bye. These party people. <laughs> See you later. Bye -bye. Good night. Program complete. Ah, keep it where you got it. The bonus hour and a phone call from George Duke. Coming up next, the Wendy Williams experience rolls on till 7 on 107.5 WBLS. It's Bill Duke. Be excuse me, what did I say, George Duke? <laughs> Who's George Duke? Musician. You're a musician. Oh. Same difference. <laughs> You're an ass. Keep it here. Here's what's happening from 107.5 WBOS, home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Get sick for the holidays and join WBLS at the WBLS Bally Total Fitness Parties with Chuck Chill Out. Monday, November 28th at Bally's 159-26 Jamaica Avenue in Queens and Tuesday, November 29th at 2163 Tilden Avenue in the Bronx. BLS. Listen to 107.5 WBLS to find out where the street team will be in your neighborhood for a chance to take a picture with the BLS. 
ALS Santa and register to win a $1,000 American Express gift check for a two-hour limo drive shopping spree with a WBLS air personality. BLS. This calendar is sponsored by TV411. Improve your reading, writing, and math skills by watching TV411. Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. For more information, log on to WBLS.com. And DSL makes doing everything online so much faster. And now it's at our lowest price ever. As low as $14.95 a month for connection speeds up to 768 kilobits per second. It costs less than what I was paying for dial-up. It's a lot less than cable. Call 1-800-PICK-DSL to sign up. That's 1-800-PICK-DSL for the best value in broadband. Band. We got Verizon Online DSL, and we are never going back to dial up. Verizon. Fourteen ninety-five a month rate available for new Verizon residential 768 kilobits per second DSL customers. When your commitment required, $79 early termination fee applies. Speed and uninterrupted service not guaranteed. Not available in all areas. Additional monthly supplier FUSF recovery charge. A tax recovery charge and applicable taxes may apply. Other terms and conditions apply. It's about that time again. The Wendy Williams Experience is searching for new interns. Come join the Wendy Williams Experience. Fax a cover letter and resume to 866-WENDY-FAX. Broadcast, journalism, mass communication, radio, TV, and film, and music majors only. All applicants must be over 18 years of age. Currently enrolled as a sophomore, junior, or senior in a college or university. Internship hours are 1130 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck and thanks for listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, yeah. And if you don't plan on grinding, you can put that where? Back there. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs! She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40 something year old She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. Hey, 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 everybody. It's Fat Albert. Some people were calling up uh, behind the scenes. And Shaylin was answering the phone saying that you all wanted um, more information on being a model for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. And you also wanted the Dons and Divas 212 hotline number and the website and stuff. So I'll give that out to you um, in just a few moments. I'll give you a chance to get your pen and paper together. If you're just joining us for the show, hi. This is the bonus hour. No music. We just talk. We have conversation. I love it. I absolutely love it. Every once in a while, I'll have a guest during the bonus hour. George, excuse me, Bill Duke will be calling um, in just a few moments. Um, in the meantime, let's just go to the phone and just let's see who's there. Hello? Hello. Hi, welcome to the bonus hour. Hi, Wendy. Yes. You know, I am a true fan. I have been on hold since you left the air. What? Well, thank you. Yes. You know something? Your interns are too much. Last time they wouldn't even let me talk to you because I had no topic. She told me to call back at the bonus hour. Yeah, because this is, this is a free-for-all. Yeah. Oh, okay. But anyway, I just wanted to comment on Sonia Lane, if I don't pronounce her name right either. Yeah. But she, you know, she looks kind of sick. So it's possible. I don't know because she was a little sick. And then, you know, maybe a little girdle would have tied it in all, you know, together. And then again, if she had a baby, maybe she had the baby, uh, like Erica from Milwaukee suggests, you know, two months ago. Yeah, true, exactly. And I think she pulled it together. Like I said, she was a little thicker than normal, but she looked beautiful. And especially if you're having a baby by a married man, you know, and, and you know, obviously you have no sense yourself. And exactly. so, so therefore, you don't want to walk around. It's not cute to walk around with the baby fat and everything because you got no, your baby through not. ill-gotten means. Of, co- of course not. Mm-hmm. So she needed to wrap that up really quickly. So it's not... It's not unthinkable for it to happen. Exactly. I mean, it, it's terrible that it did, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, right. Um, anyway, ever, ever since you got this eight-second delay, I have had so much trouble getting into you, but I just wanted to say 
I love your show. I'm a big time fan. One other question. Wendy, do you really read your faxes every day? Yes, I do. Because I fax you all the time, and I just never hear it. I could be busy. I don't know. But anyway, um, I love your show, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Well, and thank you for taking my call. Thank you very much, and happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Okay, take care, Wendy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Wendy, what's up? Hey. How are you? I'm doing well, you know. All right. You kill me mm-hmm. with your pronunci- pronunciation of words. <laughs> wow. I, actually, I just called to tell you the, the, the subject you said about um, DMC. Mm-hmm. The correct pronunciation is Leacock T. Sport- Leacock Sportif. Leacock Sportif. And is Arthur correct in that they've been around for a while and they've had other celebrity endorsers? Um, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. So this is the first for them. Yeah. You know, it's to me, it's just all really sad the way the relationship has gone with Run and DMC. Yeah. And I mean, it's okay for people to have differences because that, you know, people grow and they grow differently. I hate that we happen to see it being played out in front of us. And while they might not be bickering back and forth, it is clear to me that, that the beef is on and strong because that man is has not done one appearance on Run's house. He has nothing to do with, you know, th- this new sneaker, you know, the, the Run out. Just... It's just foul. It's just foul. Yeah. But you it's know, very foul. Yeah, it's, and it's, you know, it's heart wrenching for people like us who come from that era, that you know they just couldn't all be together forever. But things happen. Exactly. Now, does run? Does DMC still have money? Um. You know, I've seen he and his wife and his, you know, DMC, he's luxuriated for so many years. You can't really tell by looking at DMC. But his wife looks like she luxuriates and, and has a good time. I don't think that they um, splash it around, uh, you know, so freely. I don't know what they have. Clearly, they probably don't have as much money as Ron. Yeah, you, you can you can see that. <laughs> you know what? DMC strikes me as a guy. He's just happy to have his, have his health and his sanity. And uh, money is probably not one of those uh, things that he that that kills him to be after anymore. You probably yeah, you right, you right. I can see that. I can I can see that. Yeah. So, Wendy, what's up with these Dons and Diva tickets? Okay, well, I'm going to give you the hotline number. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, the telephone number is two one two. Two one two. Four four seven. Four four seven. Five one nine nine. Five one nine nine. Yes, and this is what I can tell you about Dons and Divas so far. Uh, not much has changed since we talked about it on Friday. I still can't okay. tell you exactly where it is, but it is in New York City. There okay. will be a limited amount. You can you turn your radio down? It's going to be a lot. A lot yeah, turn a lot your radio. Turn your radio down. I'm getting confused. I'm hearing myself, and I'm trying to talk to you. Okay. There's going to be a limited amount of tickets sold. Uh, from email. Uh-huh. And you can email or else you can call that number that I just gave you, 212-447-5199. The email is Don's. Don. And A-N-D. A-N-D. Divas. Uh-huh. 2005. 2005. At Yahoo.com. At Yahoo.com. Now, the majority of the tickets will be given away. Uh-huh. Uh, on the air like that. Okay. It is the ultimate grown and sexy affair. Have you ever been to a Dons and Divas? No, nah, I haven't. But, you know, my girl, she she, she goes to damn near every event you have. Dan, <laughs> d- and she wants to go this year to Dons and Divas. Yeah, yeah. She usually goes. She, as a matter of fact, she wanted to raise that girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love Ray Zach. Ray Zach is one of the big sponsors of this year's Dons and Divas, at the, as they have been in the past. Listen, we got a five-hour open bar for the whole party. Oh, really? It's, yeah, it's not just a VIP thing. It's a, it's a party thing thing. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Is that fabulous? You know, that's great. I'm not a lush, but... Five hours can, will take you where you need that. to go. Okay. <laughs> um, but so that's what I have so far. Uh, mm-hmm. You got the telephone number, 212-447-5199. Uh-huh. That's if you want to, you know, buy your tickets. Okay. Um, or More you than can, likely, that's probably what I'm going to do, but I'm still going to try, you know, try to win them. Right. Or you can always email at Dons and Divas 2005 uh-huh. at yahoo.com. Okay, okay. During show hours, we actually, um, Art, that's why we need more interns. We actually, we actually want to post somebody at that phone during show hours so then the answering machine doesn't have to go off until after hours. Thank you, for, thank you for calling, sir. All right. Have thank a nice you. night. You have a good one, okay? Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. All right, bye-bye. I was just over at Demetrio's earlier today. That's they, They've been sponsoring, like they sponsored Dons and Divas 1 through 5, and this is Dons and Divas number 6. So shout out to Bill and Pete Demetrio. I was trying to figure out, um, like, how I would top off my, my black dress because I'm wearing black. Nicole asked me earlier, Wendy, are you wearing black to the party? 
And I said, yeah. She said, for some reason, I, I saw you like in pink, like in a sea of black, and then you wear the pink. And I said, no. I said, I want to be with the rest of the people. Because I'm sure there are people coming to the party that don't necessarily want to wear black, but you won't be able to get in if you have on another color. Like, there's none of that, oh, it's purple because you want to be different. No. And I want to be with the people also, and I want to wear black too. But I needed just the right thing to top off my outfit, and I didn't want it to, you know what I mean? And I didn't have it. So I had a few moments this morning, and I went by Demetrio Furs. And I found like a perfect, just a perfect little something that would be absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. So shout out to P- Bill and Pete Demetrio. There's a lot of choices in the Fur District, but there's only one Demetrio's. They'll do your right. Shout out to Armadale um, Vodka. Thank you so much for sponsoring. Courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx. B&B Jewelers in Wayne, New Jersey. Ben and Eddie over there. Fat Cribs International. Um, shout out to Ray Zach, of course. Yeah. The ultimate grown and sexy affair. It's the black party. And so, you know, um, I was reading in my new Harper's Bazaar magazine over weekend about the LBD girls. And I was getting all excited because I don't know about you, but, you know, an LBD is like a staple in a wardrobe. A little black dress is flattering and fabulous for all women of all sizes and all heights. It's like the essential piece to have in your wardrobe. And this season, we're calling black the new black. Like all this in black is having a resurgence, which to me and everyone out of style, but whatever. Here's Alexander McQueen's quote about the LBD. The black dress is the embodiment of woman's power. It is very stark, direct, and to the point because it relies so much on silhouette and shape. I love it. And then Neil Lane, you know, he's... Excuse me, I just have to get rid of that once and for all. Neil Lane is um, the diamond uh, dude. And so I was reading about how he's talking about how, you know, to accessorize. He says, pick one bold piece. He says, to really get the beauty of a big piece of jewelry like a cocktail, <coughs> like a cocktail ring. No, I hear you. Just a moment, okay? Yeah, I'm waiting. Okay. He says, um, to get the really, you know, the beauty like a cocktail ring, wear it alone. It's so dramatic. He also talks about layer, layering your necklaces. He says, particularly he's talking about it, it, diamonds, but that's what he does. He says if they're light and airy, they can be spectacular. He also says less is more. An abundance of baubles can have you looking like everything that you own is around your neck, on your wrist, whatever, and you're just showing off. And Neil Lane also says wear jewelry all the time. He's, here's his quote. Have fun with your jewelry and enjoy it. Keep it available to wear. Jewelry should be a part of fashion, part of accessorizing. And I say all that to say that, you know, the article about the black dresses and then the article about accessorizing just, you know, to me, speak volumes about this year's Dons and Divas extravaganza. It's just going to be fabulous as usual. Shout out to Face Down Entertainment and Question Mark Entertainment. So, sir... How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing, Wendy? What line is this, uh, Goose? Is this line seven? This is line number four. Jason, line four. Jason, is this you? Yeah, this is me, Wendy. How's it going today? It's, it says in the computer uh, something about a three-year anniversary. Yeah, today is my uh, three-year wedding anniversary. Oh. And my wife you... love you. Oh. She's crazy about you, but we live in Atlanta, so we have to listen to you on the computer. Oh. And I was wondering if you would, like, call her up and just say happy anniversary to her at work. She would lose her mind. Well, it's the same time in Atlanta as it is here, right? 11 minutes after 7? Yeah. What time does she get off work? Uh, Today is a late day, so she gets off work like 8 o'clock because she uh, is a career service advisor at a school. All right, why not? Hold on a moment. We'll take your we'll take your telephone number for your wife behind the scenes, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And then I'll call her up. Okay, hold on. All right. But now it's not going to be surprised because she's listening to the bonus hour, too. She might not be listening, though. At work. Well, let's take her telephone number, and then I'll call her um, right after I sign off. Let me see. Michelle is 29, and she's on line five. She says, how does she move on from a breakup? I mean, it takes time, Michelle. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to take time. How long were you guys in the relationship, Michelle? Hello? Yes. Hi, Michelle. No, it's not Michelle. Well, is this line five? Yeah. No. So she's gone. Oh, okay. Michelle hung up. It's you. Hi. What's your name? Hi. How are you? Good. Uh, Wendy, I wanted to ask you about the Dons and Divas. Okay. Uh, you said email address that you told me to use. Yes. 
I guess I just said that I kind of wanted to go, but is that all you need to do? I mean, what's the purpose of that? Well, the purpose of it is for you to also attach your email address or your telephone number so somebody can get back at you. Because I'm assuming that if you are um, emailing or calling the 212-447-5199, telephone yes. number uh-huh. that you don't want to wait to win passes on the air that you no, want to purchase don't. your passes and that's it yes i do exactly I must go okay <laughs> <laughs> this party is yeah. so me i must go I, what is this the third one this is the sixth one. Oh god i'm sorry but you know what have I you have been to. have you been no, i have not but the way that you just pump it up and then Fabulous. mary and uh uh-uh, uh, this is definitely me. I yeah. still belong at that party. Absolutely. And in the past, we've had Usher, we've had uh, Little Kim and Queen Latifah. We've oh, had yeah. uh, Red Man come through. And, um, oh, I said Little Kim. Um, yeah. Lisa Ray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and Makai Pfeiffer. I mean, it's just, you know. I mean, I may not be rich and famous, but I totally swear I am. <laughs> no, but, you know, the, the party is a party for us the regular people okay the beautiful people come through the party because we've upscaled it so much that we all become celebrities that night oh i totally feel you and i'm so looking forward to go i just have to be there so i will email again and just like attach my phone number or something yeah and you know what make sure you put your email address say you know i have to be there tell them how many tickets that you want the tickets are not printed up and available yet but you know what they do um the girls they pull your email we're making a dons and divas file so as soon as the tickets become available then somebody's going to email you right back okay Excellent. Will do. I'm so looking forward to seeing everyone there, especially you, Wendy. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Take care. Five hours of open bar. Mary J. Blige hosting. Trey Song's performing. Keisha Cole coming through. You know, God only knows what other celebrities will pop through. It's Don's and Divas 2005 at Yahoo.com. 212 447 5199. Hi. What line is this, Goose? Hi, Wendy. This is line number one. Oh, this is line number two. How are you? Good. This is Carla from New Jersey. Hey, Carla. I just had to call because that guy called up and he tried to correct your pronunciation. Of Sana. And he, he didn't even pronounce it correctly. How do you pronounce it? He said Le Coq Sportif, but it's Le Coq Sportif. That's the correct French pronunciation. So he should really check his pronunciation. No, 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 no. no but you want to know what? They're not spelling it like that one that's like C. They're spelling this one C O G. Oh. Yes, okay. yes, some bootleg. Oh, all right. I thought it was like that brand that's been around for a while. With the rooster that represents it, right? Exactly. Uh-uh. No, it's not, Art. It's not the one with the rooster. Okay. No, see, this is a brand new one. Now throw the crickets on it. Oh, yes. Exactly. Oh, uh, okay. All well, right. I guess I was wrong, but I love you. I've been listening to you for years. Wendy. Love you. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, you know... Shaquille O'Neal's shoes are available in Payless, and they're also available at Target. Um, you know, he's got his dunk mans, and they will be available, they say, at Payless beginning December 1st, uh, but they are right now at Target. And uh, how do I know? Because my kid wears Shaq shoes. Right. That's right. And this is what Shaq has to say. When I was a kid, I got a lot of my shoes at Payless. Now, having kids of my own, I want to create a performance shoe that parents everywhere felt good about providing for their kids and themselves. And you know who else's kids wear Shaq shoes from Target? Ron Artest, friend to the show. Yes. All that money, even after he lost a few million, you know, from the, you know, mm-hmm. You know, he still has he still had money to go buy some Jordan Jumpmans for his kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does he buy his kids? And I said, must be the cheap wife, you know, because sometimes we as wives will sneak our kids out and we'll buy them stuff while the parent while the fathers, you know, splash out, you know, money on, you know, so so their kids look good, you know, whatever. It's actually our test himself who buys the Shaq sneakers for his son. You know, I get them for my son, too. My husband would kill me, I guess, if he knew that I was telling you that. I I have no idea. I really don't care. All I know is that the kid is five years old and he wears a size three. And they go outside and they jump in those damn wood chips and they dirty him up. And they, you know, like all kind of crap happens. He buys them Jordans in between. When our son was like three years old, my my husband came home. We had a pair of Prada shoes for him for, for, for Christmas, I remember. 
He wore him in the house that one day at Christmas, had him off the majority of the time, never wore him again. It's like, you know, that's what... Men, don't take this the wrong way. That's what husbands do. That's what men do. That's, that's what men do when they have their kids. Particularly, like, you know, if it's their first. You know, you just... just I, I don't know. I find that... that um, Friends that I have that have daughters are a little bit more for like like they'll buy the good stuff for the presentation for for a school play or for mommy and me shopping days or for going to see, you know, the in-laws or, you know, something like that. But for the most part, are you kidding me? And heads up, parents, Shaq also has a full line of clothes. I know because my scooter wears them. And no, they aren't necessarily cheap. You know, I don't call 12 bucks for sweatpants cheap. When the matching sweat jacket is also twelve twenty four dollars for an outfit. In my head, you know, the bombs are going off. What? And Shaq is all curled around in the bootleg Jordan pose. You know, Jordan is posed with two arms out, you know, two arms like that. Yes. And Shaq is Shaq is posed in the fetal position, grabbing the net. There you, go. There you, go. you know what I mean? Same damn difference. I figure I only have about two more years of that before name brand starts to become everything. And I'm going to figure out a way to still, you know, trick him. Go on, Shaq. And my kid wears a size three. He doesn't know me for Nair, but, you know. Thank you, Shaq. Thank you for the Shaq shoes. Thank you. Bill is online when he's a new listener. He's 50 years old, and he has a question about Puffy. Hey, Bill. Hey, Wendy. How are you? Good. What's going on? Uh, I am a new listener. Uh, a couple of months now. Welcome. Where were you prior to this? It's okay. We can speak freely. I was on the 104.3 Rock Station. Oh, wow. So you went from from rock to the experience. Absolutely. Oh, well, it was what hooked me was um, when I was just flipping through the channels and I listened to your voice for a couple of minutes and then you gave one of your, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it just said, wow, this is pretty cool. So let me listen on. And then ever since that, I've been pretty hooked for the drive time home. Wow. Thank you, Bill. So now what's your question regarding Puffy? Well, a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about him and how you were in a restaurant and you happened to have bumped into him. Gave yeah. him the little, little wave. Yes. And he sauntered over, and you thought he was suave, but also know that he's a devil. At yes, the same time. yes, yes. Um, I think that's pretty cool of you how you can talk about it in such a way that not everybody is so perfect. Even though they're a celebrity, they're not so perfect. No. They're not so great either. And even though I think that he's the devil, he has a, a tremendous power to seduce whoever he's talking to. Right. You know. How does he do that? How is he so seductive? Like he's that? he's mystical and magical. Behind the sunglasses, he really is, even even behind the sunglasses. He had the sunglasses on, but he's mystical and magical, and he's suave and he's debonair and he's the devil all rolled up in one. Wow. Yes. You know. Also, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about how you uh, don't think you're going to make your mark in the radio because radio DJs don't tend to don't last as long on the radio or their mystique doesn't linger? Um, I think as well. I think um, I equate you to uh, the Nightbird, Allison Steele. Oh, I remember her. She used to be on K-Rock. That's right. Correct. And he does do K-Rock. Correct. And I think you have a similar type quality as she does. And I think you're going to be in there for a long haul. Well, thank you, Bill. You're and, welcome. And welcome to the listening family here. Thank you. We're, One more question. Okay. I have another minute. Uh -huh. um, the other night you played uh, Mary J. Blige's song. Mm -hmm. I got hooked into that one now. I just played <laughs> that song over and over and over. Her, her voice is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, it is. The richness. Um, do you think the song is more about her or them as being together? Um, I, you know, I think that all Mary's music has always reflected where she is in her life and she's incredibly in love with, but also very fond of two different emotions her husband can do. 
Okay. And I think that, like, when she says, I've been too strong for too long, and I can't be without you, baby. That's, right. that's a statement that Mary has been on her own for so long, having to be strong and bear the burden of so much. And then Ken Do has just come in like this breath of fresh air. He's her manager, her friend, her husband, her lover. And, and now she can't, she's been too strong for too long. She's ready to sign off and, and, and hand some of it to somebody else to help her. But she just didn't know who to, and now there he is. That's how I um, interpret the song. Yeah, because I think, I think the lyrics are, we've been strong for too long. So I, I understand it as they've been together for so long, there's nothing that can really hurt us. We've been strong enough in our relationship and our ties together that everything is great. I don't know. I got to listen to I, it. I really can't live without you because we've been together and everything is so great. I got to listen to it uh, more. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Thanks, Wendy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. As soon as I can get off the chronic... Um, I've been listening to the Chronic CD for the past week. Really? And when I shot the book cover on um, on Saturday, I shot the book cover for my first and second novel, um, which, you know, my novel series uh, starts uh, June of 2006. Ritz Harper just wanted to hear the Chronic as she posed for her pictures and lied down and tossed her hair and, you know, changed her clothes and whatnot, so... What Ritz wants, she got. I went out to my car and pulled my chronic CD in. Oh, boy. They say that uh, out in California, there's some court documents that are going to give the minute-by-minute behind-the-scenes detail of all the hospital drama that led up to the shocking death of 54-year-old John Ritter. And the court papers um, are some very serious papers. His widow, Amy Yazbeck, um, and his three adult children and from his previous marriage and their seven-year-old daughter from their marriage together. The, all their names are on these lawsuit papers suing the hospital and all the doctors involved. It's an ongoing multi-million dollar wrongful death uh, lawsuit. John Ritter, as you know, died on the hospital table after his devastating heart aneurysm um, 9 3 I'll be following that. Evelyn says, will you be at the Laugh Factory on Wednesday? I need to know. No, Ev, not on Wednesday. Wednesday, as a matter of fact, shout out to everybody in Edison, New Jersey. I'm hosting a party with a live performance by Remy Martin at the Palooza Club in Edison on Wednesday night. Uh, at, um, Palooza? Palooza. It's in uh, Roselle. Is it in Roselle? Yes. What did I say? Uh, Edison. Edison? Yeah. It's in Roselle, New Jersey. Shout out to everybody over Carlin's Cut Up. Happy birthday to Miss Carlin. She's celebrating her birthday. They have tickets, actually, for that. The Palooza Club in Roselle, New Jersey. That's on Wednesday. Thursday is the Laugh Factory. Because I just figure, you know, if your family is at all like mine has been, you know, especially, you know, rounding out this year, there's a lot of dysfunction going on. Just a mess. And you just want to come out and laugh. Forget dance. Like, like you want to come out and laugh and, and have some more drinks. I say more because how, how else do you get through... 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at your house, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, hell. 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> so I'll see you all at the Laugh Factory on Thursday night. Then Friday is the... Um, the oh, yes, yes. Yes, the comedy show. Symphony Space. Yeah, at Symphony Space That's with it. Capone and Will Spence. And uh, Tony Roberts is going to be there. And Rob Stapleton. Top dogs of comedy. Yes, yes. At the Symphony Space. Ooh, it's a busy, busy time of the year. And then on Saturday, the top dogs of comedy continue to That's offer right. Uptown Vibes. Yeah, we're going Uptown Vibes in Hartford, Connecticut yes. on Saturday. And there's an after party at Uptown Vibes right after the comedy show. Boy, I hope my parents don't have any plans on Saturday. <laughs> Welcome uh, to our lives, you all. They just landed today. They'll be babysitting the whole time that they're here. <laughs> and my parents like to socialize. You know, they like to go out and, and cut a rug in the whole bit. Mm -hmm. Oprah mentioned at the end of her show when Terry McMillan was there that, that she um, loved Terry's new book, The Interruption of Everything, so much that she bought the rights to the movie. Two days later, the book jumped from number 2,000 on, on um, Amazon.com to number 150. Yeah. The power of Oprah. You guys, Caroline Kennedy is really going through it. I mean, you know, she's 48 years old, and her husband, Ed Schlossberg, is 60. Now, you know, they have three children, 
17, 15, and 12. And Caroline has been plagued, like all the Kennedys, with an unusual amount of unhappiness in their lives. Just like something's gone on. And this woman's 48 years. It just seems like every year there's something new in terms of, I mean, can she ever find a break? So now, Ed, they're saying, has walked out on the marriage, but will remain out in the public eye with Caroline to keep up appearances. But he's walked out. Um, They got married in 1986. But with all of the terrible losses that she's had in her life, including the sudden death, of course, of her brother and, um, you know, many other things, uh, her deep unhappiness has dealt like the final blow to their marriage like he can't snap her out of it John's death she's still dealing with it and they're saying she will probably never fully recover from that there's been no dramatic breakup in Ed and Caroline's marriage they just grow more distant and Ed while he's 60 years old he could still get it so I know exactly what's on his mind he's living in his multi-million dollar Park Avenue apartment right up the street. And she's living, you know, elsewhere. Excuse me. They, no, they have the multi-million dollar up the street as a family. In the meantime, Ed brought himself a bachelor pad in the West Village, close to Fifth Avenue. And he's spending more and more time at his own place. Mm. And then they get together for, um, hey Gwen, they get together for family things. Look at him, he's a handsome man, nice and tall, he still stands up straight, he doesn't, you know, hunch over like an old man. Mm-hmm. Cash Money Records founder, um, and New Orleans native, um, Slim Williams, along with the Birdman, will be um, doing their annual turkey giveaway to more than 2,000 evacuees this year of Hurricane Katrina. They do this every year. This year, of course, they're doing it specifically for Hurricane Katrina survivors and the the displaced residents. It's going to be a sit-down Thanksgiving holiday dinner with all the trimmings. The dinner is going to be held actually tomorrow um, at Southern University Baton Rouge from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it's, you know, it's that time of year. It's that time of year. It's not such a wonderful time of year for a lot of people. A lot of depression sets in this time of year and stuff. I had a phone call earlier from a woman who lost her mother seven months ago, and she wanted to know, you know, how can she get over it? And I said, well, you know, I don't know that exact feeling, but the feeling of pain um, subsides with time, but the memory will still be there. And the more time passes the more you'll be okay with the memories until the to the point where then you'll remember your mother and then there'll be more laughter than than tears because you remember more of the good times but this year she said well what should i do you know i don't know i i said you do what you feel for this year and this year only because this is your year of experiencing first if she lost her mother seven months ago then this is her first um thanksgiving christmas new year's mother's day is going to be coming around you know you for for one year you do what you feel but don't let this take you out don't don't let this kill your spirit, kill your joy, kill your zest for life. And as she's 32 years old and she has no kids because, you know, if you have kids, then you really do have to stand up and carry on. You know, my mother tells me the stories about how when when her mother, my Nana, who I never met, she passed. Well, I did meet her. I don't remember. I was two and my big sister Wanda was nine and Wanda was able to be in school, but here's, you know, my Nana dying and my mother's driving up and down the road. I wasn't in school yet with me in the car. And I guess that's why I'm such a joyful person. Cause, and, and I know how to make my own uh, way because my mother's busy dealing with the death of her mother. And I guess there are probably plenty of times where she just sat in my cradle on top of the, the, the dining room table while she walked out, you know, in the other room to tend to her own mother. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you really might not see it, you know, art. But, you know, I am a source of uh, great joy and jokes for my mother and father. 
sometimes inappropriate. But sometimes I think that, that maybe that's the way it is. And my mother's even ascertained and said, that's probably the way it is. Because while you were young, this is before my little brother was born, because we're three years apart. My sister was in school and my mother is schlepping from the hospital. My grandmother passed away of colon cancer. So it was a slow descent. And the whole time my mother's dealing with, this, you know, this new kid, me. I guess I wasn't much of a crier. I wasn't, you know, I, I'll change my own diaper, Mom. I see you over there. <laughs> Let me make a little jokey joke. Good morning, sunshine. Or whatever. I mean, you know, you do what you have to do. I just can't wait till the holidays are over. Do you know what I mean? Or is this a good time of the year for you? Yes, it is. I love the holidays. Oh, yeah. No sadness, huh? Not yet. I was going to say. Yeah, I'm sure they will be coming <laughs> one day. Uh, all right, everybody. Um, oh, Bill Duke is on the phone. Hello. Hi, one second. Okay. Is this Wendy? Yes. Hold on. Okay. Wendy on with Bill. Hi, Bill. Great job in Get Rich or Die Trying. So glad you enjoyed it. I, you have a long list of directing credits, including Deep Cover and Hoodlum. Yes, ma'am. And uh, you acted in Get Rich or Die Trying. You played the role of, um, well, 50 Cent's Gangsta Father. Yes, LeVar. Yes, LeVar. Uh, what was it like working with 50? It was a pleasure. Um, 50 is a professional. Um, he came prepared. Um, he had his lines memorized. Mm -hmm. There was no drama with a big entourage or anything. And yes. Tim Sheridan's instructions uh, very, very respectful. Now, you have your own production company, uh, Duke Media, and I think that company's been around for, what, about 20 years? Yes, ma'am. And what does your company specialize in? Well, right now, uh, we're turning the company into a company called Choice Media, okay. and Choice Media will create content it's called Choice for the Faith-Based and Secular Community. Oh. I've, I've joined forces with uh, Corey Redman and Martin Bialis, and we partnered, and we're going to create content for the faith-based community and the secular community. Very nice. Well, like myself, you know, you are a published uh, author. Uh, what is your book about? Uh, my, well, a couple of books that I've written in the past, Black Light with Danny Glover, that's mm -hmm. about a lot of... Uh, uh, people who are very well known in black history but some who are not that we kind of brought out mm -hmm. and then um, a book uh, called um, uh, that I wrote about um, young children it's about, about um, the, a book of the children of uh, all ages and it's kind of a children's book so, so that's another book I wrote now that movie Hoodlum uh, which you directed and executive produced that is like one of my favorite movies and it comes on at least once a month like 3 o'clock in the morning love oh, it thank you for that I hope I get residuals Lawrence you know yeah, I, I hope I get more residuals oh yes Lawrence Fishburne Vanessa Williams Tim Roth Andy Garcia what a great movie I understand you did that movie for like 35 million dollars yes and that was a, a pretty good budget for those days and uh and it, we, we, it was in Chicago, and we were there for quite a while. It was a pleasure. I mean, working with, you know, a lot of good folks in that movie. Justin Tyson, who I admire since founder, and Lawrence Fritchbrand, which I also worked in with Deep Cover. Yeah. And Lawrence Williams I worked with in Deep Cover also. So it was a pleasure. And also, um, Queen Latifah was in that movie. So she was. That's right. Now, are you, are you married? Do you have children and stuff? No. And um, where are you from originally, uh, Mr. Duke? A small town upstate New York called Poughkeepsie, New York. It's between Albany and New York City. Oh, so you didn't have to go far. I know you were educated at Boston University and NYU's Tisch School. That's right, in the American Film Institute also. Very good, very nice. So what is next for you? Well, I've, I've been very fortunate this year. Um, I. It's okay. While we respect the man, that connection was so horrible. I wanted to hang up on him anyway. Uh, excuse me, Goose. Yeah. What happened with that te telephone call? Uh, it, I mean, his but his I think phone. The quality, I don't know. The his, quality was just bad. His phone was yeah. so bad it was making me sound bad. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll talk with him another time. 
But what was the problem? I did it shit off. <laughs> that's, the, that's the question. <laughs> Yeah, what was the problem? Did you did you I, press I, the button and yeah, cut him off? Yeah, I cut him off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you do it on purpose? No, no, I didn't. I, sorry, Mr. Duke. Sorry, <laughs> 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 Mr. Duke. <laughs> Look, I had a Trini question to ask you. So, can I just ask you this question sure. before we go into the break? Sure. Because you're a Trinidadian man. And so maybe you could help this listener. Here it is. <clears throat> dear Goose. Uh-oh. No, it actually says, um, Dear <laughs> Wendy, but I'm putting this in there for you. Oh, yes, it does. It says, Hello, Wendy and Art. How you doing? Goose Trini to the bone. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, Wendy, this is my dilemma. I'm seeing this guy who is from Trinidad. And Ja knows he is beautiful. He's really nice and all, but there's one thing that I feel I can't overlook. Artie, cue the dramatic music. Wendy, he's married. (laughs) So funny how people orchestrate their own production on their own stuff. Artie, cue the music. (laughs) Now, he told me that he's married for one reason and one reason only, and that's to stay in America. Is this true what you men do from Trinidad? Hey, some people do it. Some people don't. Are you here because you're married to an American woman? No, I'm here because I need to pay the bills. <laughs> no, I mean in this country. Did you marry to stay in this country? Oh, no. <laughs> that would be illegal if you said it on the radio, right? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> he paid this woman to marry him, and there is no romantic involvement. They don't live in the same house, and they only communicate if someone has to do an interview. Now, Wendy, should I pursue this any further, or should I, should I let him go? <sighs> I say romance is too complicated as it is. This is a third person in their relationship, and I don't care what she is to him. A paid bride to be, you know what I mean? Mm. It's like all too sketchy. Goose, what, what would your best answer be? I don't know. In fact, I don't know if I fully understand her, her, her problem. She's in love with a married man. He's married mm-hmm. in name only and for business. Mm-hmm. She married him to keep him in this country. They don't live in the same house and they communicate only when it's time to do interviews. To me, that lives, leaves too much room for communication. Right. Well, I mean, if he wants to go out with her and uh, it's, there's no problem, I, I, I don't see a problem. But what if she starts to fall, fall in love with him? He's still married. How long do you have to stay married when you're in a, in a green card marriage? I don't know. See, Art, that was the question. <laughs> to <laughs> dig into Goose's life <laughs> if he knew too much. Why'd you lick your front teeth? Would I, do I have uh, no, someone? No. Oh, okay. I don't know, uh, Trini, Trini um, sweetie. That's what she calls herself, Trini Sweet. I don't know. People's lives are so complicated. Yeah. And to me, it's like love and relationships are so complicated Mm -hmm. as it is that a marriage for green card purposes, three kids by three babies' mothers, Mm -hmm. a man in jail and you're corresponding. And even though he's Mm going to get out in three months, I don't care, three months or three minutes, he still has to got to get reacclimated to society. Plus, you have that jail anger, which is a lot like athlete steroid anger Mm -hmm. or cop anger. Mm -hmm. Them three people right there, they got a lot of anger. You know, I just... Relationships are complicated enough without starting them off, walking in knowing... There's so much complication. I mean, it's so tough to maintain a decent boyfriend these days. And to maintain, you know, a a marital relationship. Well, most of the married people who you're involved with will probably lie to you. And make, you know, because they always try to make it seem like, and I say they, because, you know, they always try to make it seem like the grass is always greener. The grass is not greener. It is a struggle. And, and you, mm. don't let me get started. But I'll tell you what, with the way, you know, with that dealing with all that green card, jail, anger, three kids and four babies' moms, it's just, it's just, it's too much. How'd Betty Wright say? I could do bad by myself. Ow. Is that the right artist? 
Betty Wright? Or is that No Pain, No Gain? No Pain, No Gain. How do you young girls know that damn song? I love the Betty Wright. My mother used to listen to that all the time. Tonight is the night. Damn. Old girl, yeah, young girls with old souls over there. Girl Fridays, Zoe and and uh, what's the child's name? Shaylin. I was gonna say Taryn. <laughs> Shaylin. Oh my god. All right, listen, we're gonna go into the break. When we come back, we'll be taking more of your phone calls. Um, I want to let you know about the auditions for the Wendy Williams Gong Show experience. Um, we can review some of the day's events. I mean, you know, if you would like, who's getting a divorce? Oh, that's right. Um, Morris Chestnut and his wife are getting a divorce. We just found out today on the show. Yeah. All right. Keep it where you got it. The experience rolls on next. Yo, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut. And you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you. As promised, we fulfilled our guarantee. We've given away one hundred and seven thousand dollars in cash. Thank you, thank you, oh my God! But it ain't over yet. The winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. Okay, repeat this. Listen to what the winning continues with a thousand dollar winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e newsletter at wbls.com. Then listen to win Thursday, December. First, beginning at 6 a.m. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBLS. What's up? What's up? You know what this is. This is the big brawler, the true warrior, Ron Artest. And you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Ron. <laughs> Ronnie's going to be a Donta Divas, too. There's a nice picture of Ron. He's on the sit-up machine in the newspaper today. What? Oh, I just threw it away. I had it taped up to my um little thing. Tori Spelling is about to get her new show on VH1. See, I think she's above this. But hold on. You could guess what it is. It's a reality show. Okay, what's her reality? Being a Hollywood princess trying to get back into television and deal with her father being a TV mogul and how people don't take her as a serious actress. That's a curse. You'll never be a serious actor after a reality show. That's the curse. What is, what is, what's going on? I was told to put the key in the ignition. It's time to go. I got to, I got to drop you off and then drop Goose off. <laughs> so I can do the in our clown car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the three of us in a little tiny car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have play rehearsal tonight. Yes, yes, yes. So I have to drop y'all off and hurry up and get over there. <laughs> <laughs> In the clown car. Now I got that visual. I'll never be able, to get, wagon, right? I'll be able to get that out of my head. <laughs> Even worse than Mini Cooper and the three of us trying to get in there. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you all. I love you for listening. Um, please come back tomorrow. I wanted to talk with you, damn, about Johnny Cash kids being upset about the movie. I wanted to show you this picture of Diana Ross's teeth. Look. Oh, no. <laughs> Just really look at them. Really. I'm trying. Not to. <laughs> look at them. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> Tina Turner turns uh, 67 this week. Sure and I understand it's raining outside. How old do you think she is? 70? Like 72. Two? I can't stand the rain. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me? How dare you? you. Vaughn's up next with the quiet storm, everybody, on 107.5 WVLS. Bye-bye. <laughs> Wendy Williams broadcast day has completed. Oh, man. And WBLS music starts now.